in the grim, dark future of the 41st millennium, there is only painting! Hey! Is that, I th was that his voice? Yeah. <laughs> she, yes. Yeah, yeah, sick. All right, great. Now we've got... We the, the Emperor of Rubber, our friend uh, Bebendum F. Bebendum, is here to help us out with yet another Tinker Tailor Solder Fry uh, painting extravaganza here on the mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. Uh, my name's Ian. We got Ben here as well. Hi, I'm Ben. Yeah. And we got uh, Matt and uh, Paul running the tech behind the scenes here today. And, uh, well, for those of you not aware, this is a Let's Try program, which means uh, we're going to try stuff out that we might have never done before. Maybe we've tried it a couple times. We're just going to try and do things and see if it works. And oftentimes, it does. Yeah, sometimes. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and certainly do hope that happens today, mm -hmm. uh, because uh, these are not just for our own personal uh, enjoyment of, of the love of painting, but we actually have use for these figures, uh, because all of uh, July, is is going to be we're playing kill team that's correct yeah we're getting these ready this is like if if for like friday night paper fight we had to also design the cards and <laughs> design, like and illustrate, and, yeah, them. illustrate yeah. them and make them and all that jazz yeah, this cut is them out. oh god that would be terrible yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is the, yeah this is really building on uh yeah we're, we're doing this thing from the ground up which mm -hmm. is cool so in yes as last well not last week last time a fortnight ago uh you got to see the construction process mm -hmm. a number of these uh these little dudes and today we're going to be uh working on the painting itself uh uh, from various levels of, of doneness, I've got some coats down. This online. looks so good, dude. Oh, thank you. Yeah, they I'm, look really, really I'm good. I'm really happy with with it. There's some cleanup that needs to be done, but uh, they're looking just about ready to get on the table here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, no, for those questioning, no Corey tonight. She's feeling a little bit under the weather, but uh, she will be complete and ready to go. Battle ready. Mm -hmm. when things occur in July. They're looking so good oh, already. <laughs> She was telling me the other day, uh, like yesterday, about how much effort is like going into like her masking everything out and mm -hmm. stuff like that. Then she posted a photo into Slack, and oh, they're gonna be so good. Oh, this is I think her first time playing with airbrushes too. So these Ooh. are this is impressive stuff. That's nice. Yeah, I think a lot of people are learning. This, I, I'm doing dry brushing for oh. my entire army. Basically, it's my first time doing it, uh, and uh, I'm 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 pleased so far with mm -hmm. how it's going. I think it's going okay. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited to continue doing it. This is I, my sort of my goal is to do kind of like a Death Knight uh, from like World of Warcraft inspired custodies with like frosty armor mm -hmm. uh, and stuff. And uh, yeah, it's my first ever time really giving a go These on it. I've... Really, really like this. This looks to me in my mind what a Warhammer figure should look like. So. Okay, perfect. I, th I think you're doing it right. I was looking at it, I was like, ah, oh, man, like, uh, I'm pretty feeling medium on how this looks. So I feel like it's like you need that outside perspective. <laughs> <laughs> it's very helpful for it. <laughs> so yeah, we're just going to uh, hang out here for the next few hours, uh, put some paint on plastic, and uh, just shoot the shoot the breeze. Yeah, so, yeah, it seems very chill, because yeah. I, initially, when we when we posed the thing, I was like, "We're gonna get like five people yep. on TTSF, and it's, it's gonna, gonna be, be like big a big wide." Yeah, and then people have vacations, mm -hmm. and... and now it's just become just chill because yeah. you and I don't have lives. Oh, yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so certainly nothing else we could be doing at this time. Mm -hmm. Honestly, base that, and it would almost look done. Yeah. So my my what I would like to do is I, I, today's kind of experiment amongst also painting things for me, is I want to make this blade, which unfortunately got a little nicked, but I actually kind of think that's fine. Yeah. I like it for flavor reasons. Uh, it's not as pointy on the top, but um, I want to make this blade look like it's made out of ice. Mm. And like all the weapons basically look like they're made of ice. And then my thought process is you can kind of see a little bit of white on the booties. Um, I want to put like sand or something on the base and paint it white like they're walking in snow. Mm. Um, and so then, uh, yeah, and then I want to make the eyes glowy. And then other than that, I think <laughs> I would need to get some more metal like looking like uh, silver into certain spots. Like I don't love how like the rope is also kind of like by the crotch is also blue, mm -hmm. but um, yeah. I just had an idea, if I can. Yeah, yeah, here. yeah. So please. You at the end, I didn't notice that the end was chipped, and that was. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that's just me not knowing that particular figure. But if you're going to make them ice, why not add just a little bit of chipping to each of the blades and actually highlight that as if it were ice that had been oh, chipped? Oh, that's a really good idea. Yeah, I like that. 
I mean, you could even like take a little, a few gouges out exactly. of the like blade of it. Yeah, these guys, I kind of want them to be like they're dead custodians <laughs> that have been somehow, I don't know, risen, risen, mm -hmm. which is probably big time heresy. It, um, uh, <laughs> dead guys, dead guys walking around is like half, it's like half the norm of forty k, right? Yeah, yeah. 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 So are you allowed to be dead walking around? Okay, we'll let it go. Yeah, yeah. I mean, <laughs> what's your opinion on the emperor? Oh, pro? Okay, then, yeah. Good, good. Yeah, go do your it's, thing. <laughs> I, I just like that there's basically nothing about this model other than, like, the gun attached to his uh, staff or his his. Yeah, spear. like the actual that the like the, the, this, this is, is actually, basically yeah. just like a Warhammer fantasy model. You could probably almost get away with yeah having this in fantasy universe. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I, what I like is Warhammer Fantasy has models that look exactly like this, except in in this version he's wearing like power armor. Yeah. Whereas in fantasy, it's just ginormous piles of metal. Like there's no power aspect in the Warhammer Fantasy thing. It's just a guy wearing, you know. 2,000 pounds of metal. <laughs> mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, a couple of people saying baking soda makes yeah. for really good snow. That's so interesting. Might have to check that out. Yeah. Just need to not ever put them near uh, Coke. <laughs> Vinegar. Vinegar. Yeah. Vinegar, right. Vinegar is the thing. Coke is Mentos. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, um, I think that would probably fire it as well. Like, yeah. Uh, anything, yeah. Anything acid. Acidic. Yeah. 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 So, you get a cool thought. Oh! You can then get to uh, feed your little dudes to a volcano, and then the volcano erupts. Hey, that's the, I mean that's what happens when our kill team loses. Yeah. Yeah. After all this setup, you have to actually like dispose of them oh, if yeah. they lose. We're, we're keeping a big pot of acetone in there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, oh that's wow. The, that's the scar mechanic that will go. Oh, this person <laughs> died. Dunk. <laughs> Who knew we were going to be crossing over War T Warhammer and. Uh, who framed Roger Rabbit? Yeah, yeah, I was gonna say that's like a yeah, that's Roger Rabbit <laughs> levels. Not the yeah. dip. So I think to warm up, kind of get my painty fingers going. I'm actually just gonna start with dry brushing a new friendo, so people can kind of see how I got the color. Sounds like but, a good plan. Um, uh, my uh, thoughts for today are to clean these guys up in some of the areas where I've done some overpainting. Uh, get some of the silver bits that I've missed, and basically get these ready. Uh, oh, maybe some of the red bits too. These are looking so cool, oh, dude. Thank you. It's su the tower, is such a you army <laughs> too. Like it's just the moment, the moment you were like uh, dibs tower. I was like, yeah, that seems correct. <laughs> that seems to be the, uh, the, the the ongoing opinion of most of the community right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, <laughs> like it seems very. Oh, it's on tower. Yeah, that tracks. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we've been. Uh, Plugging away at these a little bit every night. Uh, people asking uh, what the stance of Jacob's armies are, and uh, he seems like he's been doing pretty good. But yeah, yeah, he is. Uh, I believe he's actually got most of his army all fielded yeah. and painted. Like, I think his game plan is to go, oops, all boys. I think for this, it was either he was going to go, oops, all boys, or he wanted one orc like commando leader and like 20 Gretchen. <laughs> like just just fielding uh, a big pile of dummies. Oh my gosh, that's gonna be great. Yeah. This is gonna be a lot of fun. Yeah, I'm, I'm really pumped for this. Like it's, it's very much like an experiment mm -hmm. for us. Um, Especially going from, from uh, nothing to the whole the whole deal. The whole kit and caboodle, yeah. All right. So let's lay down some Dawnstone here. Yeah, so I'm using, basically I did like, I started with dark blue, or in this case, I'm using the uh, the army, the army painter war paint. So this is deep blue. And then I kind of go up the the blue spectrum the <laughs> with each uh, with each kind of coat. Yeah, I think I'm just gonna touch up some of my over paints here that I've done. Uh, the other thing, the one technical uh, piece I'm going to work on today is finishing up the uh, the plasma effect on these little uh, railgun boys here. I've laid down the the dark. I've laid down the uh, the initial blues for it, and then we're just going to touch it with white on top, just to give it that little sort of pop. Oh. So we were talking earlier just about. Uh, these paint pots and how bad they are at keeping things wet. Yeah, I've been uh, not wholly impressed by like the longevity of a lot of Citadel paints, mm. but I'm sure it's also because I'm just like not 
you know, keeping them as I should. <laughs> um, but uh, I mean, in general, like I've I've been really wowed by this, like the army painter stuff. I just ended up like getting it off of Amazon for like I think they had a sale for like 150 bucks for that big old all of this. Oh, mm. <laughs> okay. Uh, and uh, yeah, they've served me very well. Um, I'm also kind of worried to see how this goes. So the first, the this guy, I actually primed in white and then I painted completely black. Um, and then I thought that I'm, I should be able to just cut out the middleman and prime black mm -hmm. and do the same. So I'm, I'm curious to see if that actually augments I, anything. I but. don't know what the official word on that is, but in Ian Horner's book, that's exactly what I do. Yeah, I'm saving a step. Yeah. I went on to Amazon as well recently and picked up a bunch of little dropper bottles and some uh, ball bearings to mm -hmm. hopefully transfer the uh, the bad paint into something that'll, well not the bad paint, the good paint into something that'll hold it a little bit safer. Mm -hmm. yeah. So, so uh, I mean, not that this is a, a uh, uh, necessarily like a learning technique stream but uh what so ben you're dry brushing right now yeah what uh how, how what's the difference between that and i mean i, I guess the brush is drier <laughs> yeah but <laughs> what so, why are you doing that so i had to do a um watch several kind of little tutorials on it but effectively what it is is you take your paintbrush and you dab it in paint obviously dry and then you take it to the uh, a piece of paper towel and you just get as much paint off of it as you can <laughs> so that there's just a little bit of pigment left in there. And then you just go onto your, uh, your mini that you're going and you just paint up and down or maybe just down or maybe just up depending on what you're trying to do. <laughs> Um, and then what that's going to do is instead of getting like the, you know, paint pooling in areas, it's actually just going to pick up the raised areas mm -hmm. and um, give that highlighting. And then as you can kind of see like on this guy, that's how like the base black ends up shining through. Um, and uh, you, but you kind of get like that sort of frosty sort of overtone and all the other big raised parts are, uh, are it covered in that blue. So you get those nice shadows. Yeah. It's a technique I've always, I've actually had a prob, uh, problem internalizing. Mm -hmm. Just because it is one of those things that makes me th think immediately, like, oh my god, I'm wasting paint. It really, it, yeah. you do, you look down at like your paper towel and you're like, oh my god. <laughs> <laughs> like it's all going away, but. Uh, yeah, a surprisingly large amount of painting techniques is put paint on brush, take paint off brush, then use it. Yeah. <laughs> The, uh, and what's, what's been really nice about this for me is, um, so over the, the Pandini, I picked up so many orcs and I assembled them all because I actually enjoy that. Um, and I've painted maybe four of them, uh, because I just have wicked bad painting anxiety. Um, and I think it's amplified by the fact that, you know, you spend like 60 bucks on like a box of dudes and then you feel like if you mess it up, the paint job that you've like completely just w wasted your money oh, effectively. Yeah. So you just sort of sit there. So dry brushing has uh, really, really appealed to me right now um, because I'm just I'm just bleh, with a big brush. <laughs> like yeah. there's not there's not a lot of uh, like obviously you, there there's there's a rhyme and sort of reason to everything, but even like. I have not been doing a lot, but you can already see like the you're getting like a little bit of that definition in terms of, you know, the more raised parts are getting that nice sort of blue picked up and then but the black is the in the, the deeper recesses of it are, is uh and is then, still sticking straight. And then you're going to be building up different layers of blue. Yeah. And do you do you do it like as you go into a lighter color, do you use it even lighter touch on the dry brush? No. Nope. <laughs> okay. <laughs> not even. Yeah. Well, at least I, that's not what I did for this guy. And I mean, definitely I wouldn't say, you know, to take what I'm saying as gospel because <laughs> I am a fresh faced baby to this hobby. Um, I'm kind of just 
sort of regurgitating what I've sort of seen on like painting channels and stuff. But I will say painting channels have been very, very helpful for this exact <laughs> thing. Oh, can, can confirm. Yeah. Um, and there's a channel I quite enjoy called um, Midwinter Minis. And they have a little speed painting thing where they're like, I want to see how good of a job I can do on this orc boy in 20 minutes. What? And uh, they do the whole painting of it, and they're just like, yep, just slop this here on here, and do, 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 and at the end, you know. And of I, course it makes you cry, because you're like, what the, hey, How what? do you do that so easy? Yeah. But it's like, it's, it's like, actually. It's, it's like it's, Bob Ross it does his paintings in like 20 yeah, minutes. Yeah, yeah. Um, what I like about them too is, I will say, and what makes me very excited about what we're about to do with Kill Team, um, not to not to like imply that we're like amazing at everything we do, but the production quality on a lot of actual Warhammer content is not great. It's like some dude holding like a handy cam or something <laughs> like that, and they're just sort of talking without like. And obviously, you know, it, it works, and not to discredit or anything like that. Um, but we're in a position, we're a very fortunate position, thanks to everybody, um, that we have we can bring that production quality, and I kind of want to see how we can. What we can do, absolutely, in that space. I mean, we were we we were sort of laughing uh, a while ago when, when we were talking about doing this stream. That it seems like, at least from an outsider, uh, the Warhammer uh, uh, community in terms of you know uh, types of videos, it's number one, painting videos. Yes. Number yeah. two, lore videos, and number three. Actual gameplay game videos <laughs> and like the the margin between it <laughs> yeah, is yeah. large, yeah, which is cool. I mean, what's interesting to me about this, coming from somebody who plays like a lot of card games and you know video games and stuff like that, is what intrigued me about wanting to play is I like the the game. What seems to be the gameplay mm -hmm. portion of it, um, and as somebody who's never really gotten into modeling or like you know like I've never done a gunpla in my life or anything like that. Um, this this part is is quite interesting to me, and but I know that for a lot of people, this is the part that draws them most to the hobby. Hmm. At least that's that's my understanding of it, based on you know general reception to people watching things. Yeah, cause I, I've been a, I've been a slow uh, a slow burner, I guess, in, into the wargaming world, mm -hmm. and I st started off just being interested in them, but never wanted to get into it because you know the the time commitment and many commitment of getting into a hobby that's not just the game, it's also now the minis, yeah. the the uh, paint, the equipment, etc. Mm -hmm. And so... Yeah, jumped, there's a lot of steps to yeah. it. So I jumped into X-Wing thinking like this is a uh, this is a great little game for that. And uh, turns out it is a great little game, mm -hmm. but number of players is a little bit lower than I would like it to be, especially here in the uh, in the Capital Regional District. Oh, just like like general like people to play with and stuff? Exactly. Yeah, that's how I feel. Uh, we were kind of talking about it yesterday on the Digimon card game stream. There's not a, not not a, a big community. digi community. <laughs> <laughs> and so yeah, getting when finding out that there are other people who are into Kill Team and uh, finding a, a race that I actually, you know, drew, draws me in because generally Ian is not a big fantasy uh, guy. Mm -hmm. And he even whiffs of fantasy is kind of like a stank on it that just sends me away. Yeah. Yeah, I mean what's interesting is bet between the two, I think I would rather get into like the the in, into uh, Warhammer Fantasy because mm -hmm. I just like like the factions and stuff are very cool to me. But 40k seems to be more of the the popular thing, and I more so want to play yeah. with people. And and Kill Team really intrigues me because I the 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 large army sizes of a regular 40k game kind of overwhelm me a yeah. little bit. But the um, the almost board gamey nature of uh, of Kill Team is very, very intriguing to me, so. But I, what I especially like is the fact that it is compatible with uh, the larger Warhammer game. Mm -hmm. That you can get into Kill Team, you can paint your, your dudes, and if, if, it's, if it appeals to you, you have that gateway into the larger, the, the, the right, just whole thing. Add a few more uh, squads and you sort of have a full army. Yeah. It's, uh, yeah, I mean, it, and the, like the painting thing with with Warhammer is really interesting because it's like so like the painting of the miniatures is so much a part of the hobby, uh, you know, uh, and 
and it seems like it, it, in some ways it seems a little like initially like kind of like uh uh kind of gatekeepy where it's like well it's you like can't a... you can't play unless you paint your miniatures you know yeah. you can't bring your miniatures to like the store to to play if they're not painted which seems a little bit kind of like oh uh-huh. but then again you know especially in the past couple months we've played a number of games on like AFK where we've just like opened the box and played it and they're unpainted miniatures mm-hmm. and it gets very confusing it's hard to tell yeah i think at minimum something i'll probably end up doing for AFK games that have like models and stuff if cuz it's like i don't want to paint every model for every game that <laughs> that we end up getting played but i i would be fine with going as far as at least painting the bases I think, which would go mm. probably a long way to, to help in that. Because, yeah, Sky Terror was super cool, um, but I went back and watched the VOD. I was like, this is just an amalgamation of, you know, gray plastic. <laughs> uh, I mean, painting the bases was especially good for, like, the overhead shot. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah, that's the... I've done the first sort of dry brush coat, uh, which I'm pretty happy with. I think overall it's gotten in there a little bit and uh yeah i mean it's a little interesting enough like the the the, the black primer v black paint thing is uh the the primer is quite a bit darker but mm. um interesting so you so uh, i guess you painted the uh, you had the black over white before yeah also you can see that uh they got a little scuffed on the way in so i might Ooh. try and do something to fix that which is fine but uh, yeah versus like so you start off with that, and then we're slowly going to start building up whiter colors and stuff. Or I like I like that uh, Space Marine um, power armor has vents in the back, <laughs> but because these guys are super hardcore, they've like changed, adapted it so that the vents are like eye holes of a oh, skull. Oh yeah, I guess I never <laughs> even noticed that. <laughs> uh, maybe that's just the human condition. We look for faces. <laughs> uh, well. I mean, also, they put skulls everywhere. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like that's <laughs> I I don't think it's a uh, a stretch to say they molded everything into skulls. Yeah. One thing that's nice too about dry, uh, like dry brushing and stuff is uh, dries very quickly, mm. so you can kind of move on to like the next step as you're going. But Keep I'm, things moving. Yeah, I'm going to I'm going to let this guy sit for a little bit. Um, so what I kind of want to do. Um, I was saying was uh, try and make the blade essentially look like ice. Um, I was inspired by, I wonder if you can actually get that on the on the screen, but uh, this is effectively sort of what I'm going for. Um, where the, uh, yeah, the blade kind of looks like it's kind of icy and stuff. So what I'm thinking to kind of go from there to, from this to there is I think I might actually just paint over the blade white. Mm. So you can get the white white to, base to really make it like pop. Yeah, yeah, and then dry brush on a very light blue, and then a white over top of that again. Mm. So I think I'm just gonna glob on some white. <laughs> I've Seems uh, like a good plan. I've seen people say it, like have various different opinions about uh, like the 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 border around the base. Mm-hmm. Like the sort oh, of the, yeah. the sort of uh, 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 just the edge of the base, the outer edge. Yeah, whether that should be you know black or green or gray or there's apparent. It's one of those like people have strong opinions yeah. thing. I, I see <laughs> that every every uh, uh, every hobby community has yeah. those yeah. weird little issues. Specifically, be comment be complimented on the the quality of their their black edged bases. That's an interesting thing to be uh, pointing out, but okay. I realized I for- I'd forgotten to color in my uh, towels, little booties here, so. Ah, the booty painting. Yeah. Mm. Well, bo- the bottom booty, not the, not, not. Well, that doesn't help at all, does it? <laughs> the, the, uh, the bottom but, booty. The bottom booty. Wait, well, what's, I mean, what's the top booty? <laughs> on AFK, <laughs> what did I get away with to say while it was like <laughs> on the behind portion of my article of yes. wear. <laughs> the articles of wear. The articles of wear. <laughs> God, that's good. Yeah, so 
initially doing this just because I had a few overpaints on some of these guns and I want them to look real cool. But. Mm -hmm. Huh. I mean, that's already actually doing a lot for it. Like, it's wow. not not what I want quite, but that's actually already doing a number for it. Just doing a little... It's a step in the right direction, that's for yeah. sure. I gotta say, just doing like this even for a little bit, the people whose like whole shtick is, uh, you know, painting dudes on camera. I'm like, <laughs> how do you hold still <laughs> and get it all on camera? Because what I want to do is I want to get like, <laughs> like right up <laughs> onto my chest. Yeah, yeah. Yep. But uh, this works fine. Oh, you mean like this? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Like how, how you're doing? Like the hunch boy yeah. of Notre Dame. The hunch boy of Notre Dame. Father, when will I become the hunch man? <laughs> Let's first find yourself a hunch priest. Are, uh, Ian, are you intending your guys to actually have that white as your uh, armor color? Or Yes, yeah, oh, we're, okay. we're going white for the armor. Um, nice. Rather than any of the other... Uh, I guess white is technically one of the sept colors as a base. I, mm -hmm. I, I understand that... Ochre is the uh, is the traditional, but there's... Yeah, I mean, they've got all kinds of different names for white. For, <laughs> currently, right now, I'm using uh, matte white, which is... Oh, M-A-T-T-E? <laughs> yeah, not, not, not how you would normally spell. I assume uh, maybe they're yeah. trying to get away with, uh, yeah. Wait, what? <laughs> <laughs> That's you know, me! Uh, yeah, it's matte white. <laughs> but if you're going Mad for a different kind, I Mad mean, Mad then you've that, also got Mad mummy robes. <laughs> Wait, what? This is mummy robes. From 1685 yeah. BC. Yeah. Man. <laughs> My favorite snowboarder, the lesser known one, the brother of Sean White. <laughs> uh, all right, I got a rotato you, I guess. Yeah, that's... But yeah, the, uh, the, the visual language of, of the Jundams uh, definitely played a little bit into my Mm -hmm. right, right. In these guys. Well, so. what I think is really neat about them is they look also like so fundamentally different than a lot of the factions and stuff in, exactly. in Warhammer. Like they almost look like they're from like an you know like an entirely different world, right? Like or franchise even. <laughs> like it's you could imagine like the Tau looking over at uh, Ben's guys and being like, "What the? What? <sighs> oh, yeah. what? Not." None of that is functional. Like, what? Yeah. Why? Well, yeah. Why do you have skulls everywhere? <laughs> yeah. Well, it's like this guy. Maybe like they're like maybe this is like some super evil you know dude in anime. But then you look at like, like orcs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah you like, know, or it's just like a bunch of scrap uh, tied to them. Or even like I guess even maybe like well no because the Harlequins while it's a little bit zany in it, the there is like a like a uniformness to like the lines and mm. stuff like that on them, which kind of looks similar to that, like, I think. E even the other race that I was considering, the Eldari, yeah. are, which also have that sort of smooth outer look, that sci-fi aesthetic, yeah. are completely different from the Tau. Yeah. Mm. And I honestly think that the Tau, it, it, it might have been a business decision mm. of like, how can we get those people who like the more clean sci-fi stuff to get into Warhammer as well? Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, it's a really good way of doing it. Yeah. And of course, now that I'm, you know, watching war videos, uh, right and left, while I sit and paint for hours, it's uh, I, I am completely bought into the whole thing. I um, I've gone deep into the nerd hole recently. When I was, at least when I was painting this guy, um, I've while I paint, I've been gold farming in MMO. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's so I'll like I'll post a bunch of alts in like different locations for like different things, and I'll just sort of swap between them while I'm painting and like <laughs> waiting for like spawn timers and stuff like that. That's perfect. Yeah, this it's like big nerd energy, but also it's big like I need to always be doing multiple things at once, like ADHD vibes. So that's right. yeah. All right. Well. Honestly, even just like a little tiny coat of white, uh, I think like instantly already made this look a lot better. Oh, and it, I think it set it apart like as a different color from the armor. Especially as a highlight. That's yeah. going to be. So I think maybe if I maybe dry brush on a little bit of the very light blue, maybe or even just like really like edge highlight, and then do like another little white wash 
that might uh, might do some good. I don't know. I feel like I should do something else with the with the uh, actual spear, but I don't know how I would get there. Hmm. There's like that sort of the sort of uh, uh, ray. Like there's the blade of the spear, and then there's like the actual the sort of uh, piece that's attached onto the gun. Mm-hmm. As like I'm not. It's not. It's Sometimes yeah. hard with these things. It's like, is that actually supposed to be like a different piece, or is that? Just... Yeah, no. Like it's it's a it's a gut. Like the top of the handle is just yeah, just like there's a magazine, uh, like right there, you know. So who it's knows? like he he put like a bayonet on his gun and then just like kept going. Kept, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, well, what if we put another gun on my gun? You know, like <laughs> just we'll just keep gunning it up. That's how with a little work, one yeah. spear can become three guns. Three guns. <laughs> I want to go. I want to go to like the Springfield, like <laughs> center where Mo just puts on all these different TED talks. Yeah, give him one of these. Yeah, say some gangsters dissing your flag, girl. Uh, all right. So now, um, I don't know if I should do another. Eh, nah. We're gonna move up a color. So now I'm going to crystal blue. Crystal blue. There's also the thing with like, uh, you know. If you're, I guess, a professional model painter or a hardcore model painter, you know, you've got a bunch of stuff to paint. You would do the, like, dry brush them all one color and then move to the next color and dry brush them all. Then, you know, you do sort of a assembly line kind mm-hmm. of fashion. Yeah. Which I, I, my painting has always been, like, uh, that I, I you know, I, I want to sort of concentrate on one guy. Mm-hmm. But it's... Uh, yeah, I guess it depends on what kind of volume of painting you're doing. Yeah, I mean, that's what's just drawn me to this. Like, you're seeing my whole army. It's <laughs> one, two, three, four. That's yeah. my kill team. <laughs> that's, that's... Like, your guys are just like standing there being like, okay, you take the 30 on the left, I'll take the 30 on the right. You two in back, take the 50 that are left. Yeah, Let's go. Yeah. It's already, yeah, it's exactly what I wanted. Like, I just wanted some big. Thick boys, <laughs> so you can already see like the 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 blue is starting to brighten up a little bit on like the shoulder that I've gotten there from like the other parts, and it's just yeah, it's literally just. I, guess I need to drop some silver on a few of these boys. I haven't uh, finished just yet. I get to break out one of my favorite paints, mm. Dollar Store, Crafters Deco Art. Acrylic. Oh, I thought that was the name of it. <laughs> was Dollar Store. <laughs> <laughs> what? what? What would the color Dollar Store be? Oh, God. Uh, I mean, so I uh, I attribute, like, green and gold yep. to the Dollar Store, but that's mm. obviously, I don't isn't know. Like do- that's like Dollar Tree, isn't it? Dollarama. Dollarama. Yeah, one of those kind of ones. But I think a lot of the, the Dollar Store color meta has converged a little bit. I mean, my first instinct would be like the the kind of uh, yellowy beige of like plastic that's really old. Mm-hmm. <laughs> that, that's, that's degraded a bit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's where I would go. Maybe the color of dust. But yeah, dollar store paints can be surprisingly good. Even airbrushed, thinned 50-50 with uh, windshield washer fluid. Windshield washer fluid? Yep. That's the uh, the first hack I learned when I uh, pull, pulled up my airbrush. And, uh, huh. yeah. It went is right. how you clean it? No, 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 this is, uh, this is paint. Oh. Where have what, I got one here? What, what, what is windshield washer fluid? It's the fluid you put in your, your no, tank. What, 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 what's oh. in it, though? <laughs> <laughs> that was such a matter-of-fact answer. Duh, Paul. <laughs> what else would it be, man? Oh, thank you. <laughs> thank you for answering my question. Yeah. Uh, Some people don't know. <laughs> when cars' windshields get dirty. Now, it's uh, yeah, propylene glycol uh, to, to make it uh, um, uh, uh, antifreeze. Which is uh, mm-hmm. a good. Not, that also counteracts some of the, uh, the the cooling effect you get with the uh, with airbrushing by carbon dioxide. 
uh, but it also contains a surficant, uh, a surfacicant, uh, like a soap, basically. Something that's going to keep thing, uh, things from having their surface tension bead up, uh, bubble up and bead mm -hmm. up on things. And so I've got actually a couple vials, in fact I've got three vials here. Of, uh, oops. So there's just some that I keep in the bottle for when it's necessary. This was the last of my Gundam Grey, which was a custom mix of white, black, and the uh, uh, the windshield washer fluid. And this was one that Corey mixed up for airbrushing onto her clowns. Ooh. God, yeah, the green is just a really, really good color. Yeah. It does look. That looks like a particularly toxic green. I like that. <laughs> you definitely want to use a. Uh, you definitely want to use a uh, a mask when you're using that. But it's it's mm -hmm. an incredibly cheap way of uh, thinning your paints for airbrushing. You're saying you uh, have like a, a a CO2 airbrush? Yes. Or paint? Uh, yeah. Air yeah. Well, it, it, any uh, airbrush can can work with a gas. I know some people like to use nitrogen because it's uh, it doesn't have the same problem with getting as cold when it comes out, but uh, I had an extra CO2 tank because uh, the kegerator I <laughs> ordered to replace the broken one came with its own CO2 tank, and I thought, yeah. well, hey, let's just use that. I saw a cool thing, someone demonstrating uh, or, or sort of testing out, um, there's sort of a new breed of, like, cheap USB oh, yep. air compressor uh, um airbrushes that are actually apparently like surprisingly good well they're designed for makeup initially and uh yeah they're they're not bad uh -huh. if you just want to get something to coat things with, with yeah and like and you know super portable as opposed to having you know a whole infrastructure for your airbrush that was actually the first airbrush uh, that i picked up the problem being is it wasn't a uh, the, the brush itself was not great Ah. So I did upgrade that, but uh, having the compressor around is super handy. Mm -hmm. right, there's a, possibly a future Tinker Tailor in that, where I go down and do some quick uh, repairs to scratches on my car. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Oh, nice. It's a good way to do it. Yeah. I've gotten to the point uh, where I've definitely used the black to uh, uh, my my black paints to fill in holes in my coffee table. <laughs> <laughs> As they are like little nicks I as they come along. I thought of that. Yeah. Well, it's just like it's the cheapest coffee table in the world. Nicole and I went to IKEA, yeah. and I was like, I was like, I want a good coffee table. Um, and we were just like looking at all these different ones, and they were just like, Nah, you know, I don't like this one. I don't like this one. And then they were just like, No, this is the one I want. And I was like, Nicole, that's the Lax. And she was like, Yeah. And I was like, That is the cheapest student college yep. dormy. <laughs> Uh, coffee table that they own. It is like 40 bucks, maybe. Yep. Uh, and it's literally just the particle board and two like things, and then a particle board, like little under thing. They wouldn't um, even use that to stage a home. Yeah, list. oh no, that, that, I, that's like black box theater coffee table, <laughs> yeah. honestly. Yeah. Like if you're not just going to like, you know, mm. antiquing or something. Um, and uh, it's like, it's fine, it's lasted us like, you know, two years or whatever, but it definitely like gets like those little chips and stuff. So yeah, I just use black paint and fill in the holes. <laughs> That's it. Every day you're not buying a new coffee table, you get to save for an even better one. That's true. Yeah. Uh, so I finished the second uh, little dry brush coat, and uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Holy moly! Yeah, it's what a difference. It's it's such a huge difference. Slowly, kind of moving up on it. I actually initially, uh, when I was doing it, almost was like I might actually just stick with this color. But I didn't think it was like icy enough, and it was a little too like ultramarine blue. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but yeah, and so this is really the effect that you get when you do dry brushing. You still get that like base sort of coat of whatever you put, but all of like the uh, all of the highlights and stuff are what get picked up by the uh, the dry brushing. And uh, man, the people suggesting me to to look up dry brushing techniques and stuff, you definitely gave me the courage to, <laughs> to paint, because I was not not ready to, to, these guys seemed like there was a lot of work, and this is a nice, easy job. I people, like it. Ju people just say, oh yeah, just dry brush it. Yeah. Like it's a thing that everybody knows how to do. Yes, yeah, and fortunately, like there is obviously a little bit to it, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, it, it, if, you're, if you're not feeling, you know, very comfortable with your painting skills, 
are anxious like I am. I, I definitely recommend this. This is a good way of doing it. Is, is it intentional that his uh, spear is also in there, or is that? Uh, that's or, just, yeah, I, it gets caught up in the thing. So but, you uh, can, I guess you can just repaint it flat. Exactly, yeah. because, because the paint is so thin that you're doing on it, because you just you barely leave any pigment on the brush. It's quite easy to paint over, so. Yeah, dry brushing is a skill, but the return on time investment is high. Yeah, like I'm not halfway done, but it's like, if somebody put this down in front of me, I wouldn't say no. I guess I wouldn't say no in any case, but <laughs> but I'm like, yeah, this is this this homie looks good. I think you do have a good point though that uh, I bet the custodes would also or would also be pretty angry being confused for ultramarines. Yes, yeah, yeah. yeah. Like, hey. we are better. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna let that dry, and uh, yeah, already the the uh, the blade. It's I actually love the distinction that came from making this a bit more icy. But I'm gonna start also on the big guy too. Aren't they all the big guy? <laughs> uh, this guy is the king of the big guy, or at least the leader of my big guys. <laughs> oh, oh, he's got a whole shield and everything. Yeah, what I'm kind of excited about uh, doing for him is because he's got an exposed noggin, uh, I'm kind of gonna try and do like a little bit of, um, make him basically look like he dead. He's mm -hmm. got a very pale zombie kind of vibe. Give him um, some real right. damage. Yeah, yeah. They, the standard uh, Space Marine thing of the really powerful guys don't wear helmets. Yeah. So that, you know, they're, head is nice and vulnerable. Yeah, I am tremendously uh, worried about the filigree <laughs> on the oh, cape. Oh, yeah. It's going to be a little bit of a tough thing. I'm oh, gonna boy. slowly work my way into that, I think. <laughs> For now, yeah. we uh, we go back to that first easy color of uh, deep blue and uh, dry brush away. Now, he's already, you've got his cape and shield already mounted. Yes. Is that going to be a problem for like getting in behind? Um, you mean like in there? Like or? behind, like I was just like, like Maybe behind his shield, like getting his chest plate and Probably. stuff. Probably. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take, I'm going to take a brush and I'm just going to shove it back behind there <laughs> and just really wham jangle it in there just because the, the nice thing about dry brushes uh, is you want, you kind of want these like the beat up sort of bristly guys. Um, I've often heard that's the best way. To, the best way to get a dry brush is to take one of your good br or one of your brushes that used to be good and now no longer isn't. Yeah, mm. and just chop it off. Yep. Now, now is wham jangle another technique that you learned from YouTube videos? Uh, technically, yes, <laughs> but it is not from painting. It's uh, uh, from you suck at cooking. Oh, so it's more of a more adaptable term. Yeah, you suck at cooking uh, was an old YouTube channel uh, that uh, somebody I was dating a long time ago. Uh, was super into, and uh, whenever it was like you know stirring things in a bowl, they were like, "We're gonna wham jangle this," and it just sort of worked its way into my vernacular. <laughs> Love it. Just wondering if the custodies were actually the, uh, the one of the original work from homers, <laughs> given their job just to patrol the palace. Yeah, well, I mean, God, it's gotta be you know being the emperor's guard. If no one is actively going, you know, in like if the fight is far away, it's got to be pretty boring. <laughs> yeah, like the emperor doesn't really make a lot of like requests. He's just basically sitting there. He's a chair, right? Like he's a living chair. Is that well? No, he's 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 like basically a skeleton entombed in a chair. Okay, all right. Uh, and he makes. Demands? No. no, no, no. He doesn't communicate in any way. He's he, he's he's busy right now. Okay. Uh, the there, there's a somewhat of a debate as to whether he actually is like conscious or not. Okay, sure. But he seems his he seems to be still alive in some sense of the word alive, because <laughs> if he was if he was dead, he would then become alive. Yeah, and that would cause very large problems. He makes space travel possible. Okay. Yeah, he he helps. Uh, he he does the the astro something. Okay. Well, that's that, which is like a this big like uh, beacon. You know, I thought he was some sort of horrible fascist dictator, but he sounds like he's a pretty good dude. I mean, he was. He's just dead now. Yeah. <laughs> sort of dead. <laughs> he's, he, he's got the good intentions. Okay. He definitely wants to save mankind. 
Well, I thought, yeah, it was like a very morally ambiguous thing, but if he's, well, he, I guess the navigators from Dune are also like, they're doing something good, but they're not exactly good exactly. people. <laughs> right, Astronomicon mm. is what he, he operates, he, he fires, well, he guides the Astronomicon, which is a big, uh, this huge psychic, um, whatever, this, this like big uh, thing, psychic thing that allows everyone to know where Earth is when you're in the warp. So mm -hmm. that way you can like navigate. Huh. Uh, but conveniently, it also shows everybody where Earth is in the warp and uh, apparently draws in Tyranids like a bug zapper. Ah. <laughs> so yeah, there's gotcha. some issues with that. Oh yeah, and also to keep it powered, they it burns out uh, like a hundred yeah. psychers a day. He Jesus. used to he used to just operate it himself when he was up at his full power. He would just like do it, not even like it was just like one of the random things he did. I feel like I'm gonna morb, and then everything's like fine. he had he he did all sorts of other things, but just he just was casually operating this. But in order to keep it running now, they have to basically sacrifice a whole bunch of psychers every day. Turns out he was really, really powerful. Hmm. So now we're kind of hitting the morally gray area. Uh, I mean, it's not called the uh, really bright darkness of the future. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Grim bright. Yeah. The, uh, I mean, even when he was in charge, he was still pretty, um, he, he, he had some, let's say he had some good ideas and some bad ideas. Some less than good <laughs> ideas. Yeah. Yeah. Good idea, uh, you know, treating people well, somewhat. Bad idea, crusades. Uh, uh, against yeah, I mean, against all things, all uh, creatures that are not human. Mm -hmm. So, well, you also, know. On the other hand, reu reunifying humanity. So, yeah, maybe good. Yeah. But, yeah, yeah, yeah. The fun thing is he may even be alive today. <laughs> you sound... Yeah. You sound like one of those like um, like those informational like training videos. Where <laughs> yeah. They're like, who knows, kids? <laughs> one day the some, chair may rise. Some say the emperor's alive today. He could be you. <laughs> Ding. <laughs> but yeah, like uh, yeah, canonically the emperor theoretically was actually alive in the year 2020. Oh. Uh, just he wasn't, he didn't actually show himself to be the emperor, the emperor until like way later. He, he had to, he had to build up his power in order to, uh, debate some other religious people. Mm. As you do. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Lord, here we go. Yeah, we're getting some cleanliness. Mm-hmm. There, there have been some overpaints that I've, I've done over the past uh, couple, well, over the past two weeks that I've been excited to fix, and I'm finally getting to do it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, I'm definitely in the realm of it's okay to paint over if you need to. Oh, yeah, certainly. And uh, I mean, I've never done, I was going to say Soylent Green. That's a very different thing. Uh -huh. What is the mean green, green machine? <laughs> the the stuff, what you put it in and then it melts and oh, gets the paint off. The, the dip, yes. Yeah. <laughs> Simple green. Thank yeah, you. there we go. Green machine. Ah, oh, the real thing then. Yeah. Right, right. Yeah. Simple and green. That's it's how the way that I'm feel feeling tonight. tonight. <laughs> Like you know, they've told me. <laughs> you know, they've X-rayed, they've X-rayed like you know Picasso paintings and stuff, and there's other paintings underneath. Like he, he, he painted over his own stuff, and other oh, people. Really? Yeah, same. A lot of the you know, like great sort of master painters, there'll be like uh, either other paintings of theirs that they did just were like, eh, this one sucks. Canvases are really expensive, mm -hmm. yeah. <laughs> or other people's paintings. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get, get your wife who's on uh, on canvas somehow. Mm hmm. This is, I believe, the Fan Art of Lum by Pablo Picasso. 
All right, which did I use for the third color? Was it electro electric blue, void shield blue, or ultra? No, it was not ultramarine blue. So it was either electric blue or void shield blue. I th think it's void shield. Yeah. Mm. Guess, I guess I guess. Whole, uh, writing down the recipe for a particular thing might be a good idea. Definitely is, yeah. Well, you might just have a different brand of ice. We'll see. <laughs> I used to have a T-shirt that I you you know that I would often wear when I was painting, and you know it has all sorts of. It's like, oh, you've got a big black stain there. No, this is chaos black. <laughs> <laughs> and this is ultramarine blue. Yeah. This is this is. Goblin snot green, or and whatever. this is matte white. <laughs> yeah, this right. is bileless yeah, blood. Is correct. There we go. My boy's shoulders need to be sharp. Alrighty, time to turn you to ice, my friend. Did this become a Batman stream? <laughs> Chill out. Oh, so this is a bit stressful because while I am painting on in the final top coat, I don't want to mess up the shading that the airbrushing naturally had. Hmm. Yeah, the airbrush seems like it's a Real good tool for that. It, it changes the way you paint. Mm -hmm. And I don't know, if I were to do this again, I don't know that I would I would use it actually. Oh really? On these guys. Yeah. Maybe on something larger, on a uh, crisis suit if it ever comes to that. Mm -hmm. If we move up to that realm. Yeah. <laughs> but given how much I'm, uh, I'm actually just putting brush to figure, it feels like the air brushing wasn't really necessary. That said, I do like this tiny brush. Yeah. Okay, happy with that guy. He's turning frosty. <laughs> right, I was like, he's not quite the same yet and that's because I went over with white. Yeah, we were talking before the stream about the uh, the fact that both you and I were having this experience where we get to a certain point in model painting mm -hmm. where it just feels like, oh no. Yeah, like I screwed like, up, this yeah. looks terrible. Yeah. And there's nothing that can fix it. And then you just get one or two more layers on. It's like, oh, oh, it was supposed to look like that. Yeah. And I was definitely having that uh, that depressing thought earlier this week. Yeah. God, I really do like, like, so that was my first crack at it, and already I feel like I'm getting better at the technique. And just look at that guy. I think he's looking frosty and cool. Stay frosty. Yeah, and then the hope, I believe, I think I might have just put less paint on this guy, is that going over it with it with some white and a little bit of silver is gonna ah. frosty him up, but, uh, yeah. Dry brushing seems really slick, but it also looks like it absolutely murders paint brushes. Yes. yes. So you should have your dry brushing brushes, yeah. basically. And then what's also tough about them, too, is you don't want to wet them, from my understanding, during the process, or else that <laughs> defeats the thing. So you need to have, like, if you're doing like me, like four different, three different colors or four different colors of blue, you need to have, like, Six paint brushes. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Or otherwise, you're waiting for around for that to dry. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely like the the brush, the sort of sacrificial brushes. Mm -hmm. 
All see, right. see, I've got this extra brush here next to me that uh, I, I've decided is no longer a good brush. Mm -hmm. Right now it's being used to take things out of the pots. Ah, yeah. Once I transfer the paint from the pots to dropper bottles, this is going to get chopped down and turned into a either an eraser brush or a dry brush. Mm -hmm. um, right, so it's crystal blue. Probably should. Uh, I don't. I guess I didn't really want to wet palette for this. We're gonna blue up the Capitan now. <laughs> he blued himself. There it is. You know, I've never actually watched it. No, I, I think I've seen. I've right. seen bits because like Nicole watches everything, but Arrested Development. Yeah. Mm. I think I've done a and season and just never picked up after that. Yeah. <laughs> are, are we are we past the statute of limitations where we where it's some one of those things that needs to be seen? Can we can we just I know the memes so. now? Yeah. Well, I think to um, I I just can't watch shows where the main source of comedy is like embarrassing situations. Mm, yeah. Um, I get I get secondhand embarrassed so badly that it, I need to like change the television channel sometimes. Um, I, I'm also very sensitive to that. Like, I, I don't really like The Office. Yeah. Um, but I found that uh, uh, Arrested Development trod that line mm -hmm. pretty well. Uh, it didn't It never got quite bad enough. And uh, okay. it's also, there's just, you know, some very, very funny... It's got some of the best, like, crafted writing and and uh, sort of wordplay and silly, uh, uh, silly, I guess, almost like puns. Mm -hmm. Well, it's got a lot of, um, you know, very repeatable memes that I think have worked their way into a lot of people's just general speech, right? Mm -hmm. Like. Mm -hmm. I think lately I've seen the most common one is the like, you know, it's only X. What could it cost? Been, yeah, you know, fifty dollars or whatever. So. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that one's become pretty relevant recently. Yeah. My problem is I can't tell sometimes if it's an arrested development joke or a uh, what was that? The other one, Shit's Creek. Hmm. Now that that's Shit's one that, Creek is a little different, but yeah. that's one that I haven't been able to get into. Shit's Creek is quite good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it's definitely uh, starts from a similar premise, anyway. Yes. Um, but like Shit's Creek plays out more like you're watching a sitcom, whereas like I guess Arrested Development, because Arrested Development's got like the narrator and like all that kind of jazz. Going through okay. it, yeah, it's still pretty sitcom. -y, sure, though. yeah, yeah, it just kind of plays out, I guess, in a different sort of way. Shouldn't have done that. Yeah, Shit's Creek turns less embarrassing y very quickly in season mm -hmm. one, I would say. That was a show we did continue for at least three seasons mm -hmm. before. Yeah, I also it took me uh, a few episodes to realize that. Eugene Levy's son is played by Eugene Levy's son, which is yeah, like, oh, pretty yeah, amazing. It's, it's uh, very much a family thing. Um, but speaking of shows, I'm sure I'm glad that we watch things on, like, not cable, because we don't have to deal with commercials. Uh, but you have to deal with commercials, because it's 6.09, uh, and we got to run our hourly through. <laughs> Thank you, Ben. Yes. Get up, stretch your legs, swap your fluids, do what you need to do, and we'll be back with more in just a few. Don't go all the way away. <laughs>Come back to Tinker Taylor Solder for uh, here in the mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. I'm here with my pal Ben, and Hi. we are continuing our paint of Warhammer. Mm-hmm. So you were uh, you just done a dry brush there? Yes. Coat with another layer. Yeah. So I'm currently on this guy. Um, so I'm probably going to go over with a dry brush of white here to get that last little bit of frosty look. Uh, and then yeah, just kind of slowly <laughs> working through the the different <laughs> layers of of dry brushing. I'm like looking at my team and then looking at yours. Do you get to field all of that? 
most of it. Most of it? Okay. Uh, yeah, did, yeah. I was like, <laughs> So each one, each one of these drones, if I want to ring them in, are worth two dudes. If I okay. Want, so, but I, I'm going to say these two dudes in favor of this gentle friend here. Yeah. Uh, only get these two. This friend is going to be out. Yeah. And I think I get all three battle suits. So I think it's going to be that. Okay. All right. Roughly. You know, actually, like, losing six dudes uh, makes me feel... A little yeah. safer. <laughs> I don't know probably why. Like, I mean, I'm probably going to get shot by these guys a bunch. I don't know what their melee shtick is like. I know they're all about gun. Uh, they got they got rifle butts, and ideally you should never get within to engagement range of these. Cool. I'm yeah. going to just yeah. try to dash. Ta absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, it, if it, Tau are explicitly, like, really, really bad in melee. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. Well, except for this guy. I mean, he can ram into things. Oh, that's I, cool. Yeah. There was some chat in the in, in chat and on the Discord. Oh, what? His gun moves? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. The gun is like, articulated. Whoa! You can hide it, and then you can, uh, if you're Oh, careful. so it's got secret gun. Come on, get out there. <laughs> secret gun until... Yeah! Surprise! That's so neat. Daka, 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 daka. Oh, wait, that's not my thing. <laughs> Yours is more like la it, they're all laser guns, right? Technically, uh, repeater rifles and, and and plasma rifles, I guess. Okay, okay. But yeah, there's there's some talk in the uh, in the chat and in Discord uh, after the last episode, mm -hmm. uh, questioning whether or not I knew that I can't field my stealth suits and my uh, little guys at the same time, and that's incorrect. I can. Oh, okay. As long as I'm going off of the codex rules. Uh -huh. It's not in the, the the ruling for that is not in the your boxed manuals or in the. Uh, in the Chalnath expansion or in the mm -hmm. base rules, but if you go codex wise, which we are going to do, mm -hmm. because I think everyone has chosen a non boxed army. I think so, yeah, yeah. I, I don't think the custodians. In fact, we're going, fortunately, I think for everyone, we're going off the most recent uh, nerfs and, and stuff because uh, the custodians used to have four actions mm. <laughs> per mm. activation. Now they're down to three like a lot of smaller armies might be. Well, I haven't but... done looking into everyone else's uh, mm -hmm. armies yet, but I do know that at least, uh, according to the, the subreddits, the Harlequins are still a problem. Oh yeah? Yeah, in mm. terms of how uh, good they are. So uh, Corey's, Worried about that. Yeah, Corey's going to be the team to beat, I think. Yeah. Mm. Unless, of course, there's a, a, a mid-month drop. Doubtful. No, that's all right. One of us has got to kick butt. I think we're just going to have a lot of fun anyway. Yeah, it makes me more inclined to want to go pick up uh, some of the Sisters of Silence, though, because they are immune to psychic psychers. <laughs> if they're beside them, they can't get hit by uh, I, I'm psychic working powers. The, working under the assumption that Corey was, was like excited about the scary clown aspect. It didn't mm -hmm. really analyze the meta before yeah, no, choosing Corey, her team. Corey was not <laughs> m metagaming this. No, no, no. Actually, Corey and I were both interested in uh, playing the, uh, the the Harlequins at the start, but I like them from the aesthetic. The thing is, the, ba the, the, the people that I like, the, the factions that I like from an aesthetic point, don't play like how I like would like to play. Ah, and that, that really matters. Actually. Yeah, it's like I, like, I like really cool or spooky, goofy stuff. Um, but I don't like playing like horde or like super psyker sort of armies. I just want to be big, thick boys. So it was either custodies or death guard. <laughs> and I ended up going with custodies after some thought. We went custodies or death guard, and then you ended up with dead dead custodies. Is yeah. sort of how you ended. Well, here's the thing too. I I, I got into my little robo boys because I like little robo boys. Mm -hmm. But now that I'm getting more into the lore. I might be looking at some uh, some marines at some point in the future. Oh, really? Yeah. What do you, is there like a chapter that really interested you? Uh, I mean, honestly, just even the ultramarines. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the Thirteenth Legion too, just solely on its aesthetics, definitely tweaks my. Uh, my thing. But they're they're yellow and whatnot. But yeah. So okay, interesting. So they actually did sort of end up a little different looking, but I almost actually like how this guy uh, turned out a little bit more. I mean, it's it's very very similar, but uh, yeah, that's the the frosty armor look like. So this is my first attempt. I think they're pretty similar, but one was base painted white, which is this guy, and then painted black over, and this guy 
was just black primer with paint over. Was yeah. it same same brush and everything? Eh? Yeah. And I mean, I guess your your technique has probably changed a little it's, bit. Yeah, definitely. And I, this obviously has a couple more things of paint on it, but uh, yeah, I'm really I actually really like how this turned out. Like from uh, yeah, yeah. Um, actually, I saw them briefly uh, going through chat. Oh, there they go. Literally, as I was mentioning, my, my one of my buddies, uh, Paul, is uh, is in chat. Uh, and, and sitting at the tech desk, no. uh, who does like like almost like full time like Warham mini painting oh, all the time, uh, and he's very very talented. Uh, but yeah, happy with how this looks. I like uh, a little bit of this. The white ended up pooling, not pooling, or just it just built up really on the neck visor, which I think works. Like a bunch of snow yeah. just kind of like piled yeah. up on it. Nothing wrong with that. So. It doesn't look out of place, which is yeah. really all that matters. It's mm -hmm. that rule of cool. Yeah. So now the kind of goal to work towards this kind of same state is I'm going to do the painting of that and uh, work on this blade a little bit uh, and then give them that purple. Mm -hmm. I wanted to ask, what do you th what do you think? Does the... Because I can fix it. Does the little bit of grayishness that I threw in the chest work better than just the the flat blue everywhere absolutely we're looking at uh like yeah the right hand side one here that's got the gray in it that's got the gray on it yeah you absolutely want yeah you know, yeah. yeah the contrast is, really pops there mm -hmm. is that just gray or is it silver uh it's like a metal yeah, like it's right. called yeah. uh plate something <laughs> yeah yeah i think having a little bit of definition there is nice cool um, and then I also wanted, I, I don't, like, I like the purple pop, but do you think that there's something, a different color that I could add into the, the, I mean, the highlighting, the, the... I, I could see dry brushing the top part in just like a really, a really light purplish thing. Yeah, just, or I just guess to, I could do the just white. To, just to pick out the... Yeah, the white dry could also work mm -hmm. there too, like a brighter purple. So the one that, what I, the color I used for this is alien purple. <laughs> it's the only purple I had. Uh, but I do have a like a warlock purple. Purple. Mm, mm, that's quite that's quite pinky. Kind of yeah. Pink I mean you could just like you could just have like that purple mixed with a white. Yeah, that's true. Uh, I have ooh <laughs> let's go through all these fun I have orc blood. Ooh. Which I think these just need to they that's might not, be that's not bad actually. Yeah. Especially if you if you uh I tried to zenithly yeah. dry brush, like just, yeah. just from the top. Just from the top. It's also Grimoire purple. Mm -hmm. Or, oh, this is an effects one, but this is glistening blood. <laughs> what's what's effects mean? Uh, it, um, I think it's like a little bit more shiny and uh, like kind of dries differently and stuff so that it would look like blood on it. Um, I also have... <laughs> Crusted sore. <laughs> mm. I, well. I mean, the, the paint even looks a little crusty. Mm -hmm. Do you have an ivory or Caucasian flesh tone? I have so many flesh tones. We have elven flesh. Uh, elven flesh, tell me. If we're looking for like lighter ones, there's, I mean, like skeleton bone. Uh, ooh, tanned flesh. Uh, don't really have like an ivory, like a really like, like I was kind of thinking that it would be the, I was going to use mummy robes for the skin on some of the guys. Mm, yeah, yeah. Mummy robe is a good lighter tan, yeah. Okay, well, what do you think? The the lighter purple sort of yeah like that that like orc blood one looked kind of sure. cool or maybe or maybe just like the regular one mixed with yeah white or Take, something give it, give it a try you can't you, you, I mean you can't undo it you just have to start from the beginning again this is quite a bit lighter I don't know if I'm happy with how these uh, these rails are coming out but. Um, I think I need another dry brush here. So there's that. Do you think that might be a bit too light? Hmm. 
mix the two purples. That's an interesting idea. So this is the purple from before. Hmm. Hmm. I mean, we could also just, yeah, just mix the two. Yeah. Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> Is that how you do it? I mean, <laughs> I, I I personally would have uh, mixed them a little bit uh, closer together. Well, well, a little bit less from each side to begin with, right? Just to see if you get the color. But I mean, go whole hog too, and that way you. Uh... I mean, I think that kind of did it. Yeah. It sure. definitely is a different color of purple. Yeah. Sure. Let's give it a go. Why not? I'm here to experiment. It's quite dark, so it's like I'm not sure if it'll actually show up quite well. For but. a second question, I want to pose this to the chat here. We can yeah. Get an inlay on these two guys. I'm not sure if I want to add in there. Uh, you know what? Actually, now seeing it on camera, I think I have my answer. I was questioning whether or not I wanted to uh, add a lens highlight like I had on this guy to. Uh, all of them. This guy has no lens highlight. Mm. I think the lens highlight does pop I, it out just a bit. I like that, yeah. yeah. The lens highlight is nice. Damn it. <laughs> well, now Sorry. I'm going to do it. <laughs> it's worthwhile. Also, seeing it on camera gets... It's funny that seeing it on camera like that lets you uh, see other areas that I want to uh, touch up. I keep saying to myself, oh yeah, this is a... You know, you, you'll only be playing with these things from a, uh, a three or four feet distance, so you won't see a lot of stuff. And no, no. We're going to be broadcasting these games, so... Everything's going to be out in mm -hmm. the open. Huh. Yeah, I think you may need to go lighter, a little more contrast. Yeah, not quite really popping quite yet. Nice thing, of course, is you can go... Going lighter is easy. Yes, yeah. Maybe we should have did this on a different thing, but whatever. Where might work blood at? Inside your orcs, <laughs> presumably. <laughs> Why play 40k when you can just keep painting new armies? Honestly, this dry brushing thing is quite fun. I'm enjoying it quite a bit. <laughs> when I when I, I started way too much of this. <laughs> When I started doing Warhammer, like when I was when I was a kid, I went into Warhammer Fantasy and specifically Chaos, uh, only because I was like, I want the army with the most spikes. Mm. <laughs> and you didn't go orcs. I no, mean, no, no, no. Cha Warhammer yeah, fa Fantasy, they're... Fantasy Chaos. Yeah. They they have a lot of spikes. Right. Fantasy. Yes. Yeah. Oh, that's it. There we go. Sorry. Oh, yeah, yeah. There that's you, there it. You go. That's there the you ticket. Go. Good Yay. call, Twitch chat. A beautiful lilac. Yeah. Damn. I think that worked out really well. Hopping. So just, yeah, dry brushed. I basically, yeah, from, I went up kind of a thing to, uh, to just try and catch the sticky outy. I like to imagine, you know, the super tough, nine foot tall custodies going to like the hairdresser and be like, I, I just, it's not working. I, it's just, it feels flat all yeah. the time. <laughs> <laughs> and they're like, oh, I got just the thing. Just I'll the just, thing for you, honey. Some highlights. It'll, it's going to look good. Are you going to do is a little uh, loincloth? thing too the other purple bit yeah you know it's probably not a bad idea just to kind of get a little bit in there that's like how one gets into a, a certain groove with a, a technique and you're, you're suddenly of the opinion that oh yeah no i need to do that everywhere 
Might just do it on all the purple spots, yeah. That always hap like with any that always happens with any like new technique for uh, there's definitely some like loading ready run yeah. videos and stuff where you know we learn something it's like a new way to do the camera or something and or yep. you know, a new new you know you can probably trace the exact uh time in our in the loading ready run history when we uh keep, when we discovered the concept of whip pans We're like, <laughs> oh, yeah. oh we could do these all the time now and oh. we're like okay maybe we should do them all the time we do it for <laughs> so much stuff I, I was watching a uh, not a loading ready run Weird Al Yankovic the other day posted some of his b-roll mm -hmm. from the eat it video that never got used in the video okay oh. and it's it, it's just him uh, doing coverage for uh, of him in the bed okay rolling, rolling around with food and it's it's weird to see a music video that's only shot from that one shot first mm -hmm. of all because it's just him doing the whole thing from one shot. But the, the video is full of these whips in the middle of uh, break beats in the song that are clearly meant to be put there to whip to another scene. Yeah. And it's hilarious to see this one scene just, guy, wiggling, dancing around. Random whip to the left, random whip to the left. <laughs> Come back, more dancing, mm -hmm. back to whipping for a couple seconds. Yeah, no, it's gotten to the point where a lot of the times when we're filming things for live or for a pre-recorded bit and it has cuts, just every shot just has the cameraman going. <laughs> 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 and it's always you like whip out and then there you just like whip to like the person holding the boom or something. Yeah, like, well, yeah, Hello. yeah, we've done that gag a couple of times <laughs> too. But like the, because it's like from an editing perspective, if you do the whip, and you hang on for like just a sec or whatever, from an editor, you can just cut it if you don't want a whip. Right, right, right. But now, now you've got the option if it's there, so. All right, so I think I'm going to paint this, the ropey stuff, the gray as well, as though they're chains. And yet, however much we do whip pans, I can never remember which way it goes. Like. <laughs> Which yeah. way? Which way you whip in, and which way you whip out? Yeah, that's why we have storyboards. Shit. Right? Uh, yeah, we do that sometimes. Yeah. Star Wars meme. That's why you have storyboards, right? Don't drop the brush. Okay. From a, I don't want to wham jangle this too much. I think, ooh, trying to make Matt's life easier. I think I'm happy with that. I'm gonna make the blade a little bit more icy and then I'm gonna try and figure out a way to make glowy eyes, and then I think I'm just good with that. <laughs> do, do am I, do I need to do a wash of like null oil or something? I know that that's like the thing that people say, like it's liquid skill. It does add. I wonder if it would help here. And the only reason I. I, I hesitate is that this has a nice matte look to it. Mm -hmm. that I don't know how well the wash would take. Mm. And as you say, there is always the danger of over wham jangling. Yeah, you got to be careful. Yes. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to get too crazy with the cheese whiz. Um, yeah, I. I just want to do like a cut, maybe like a little thing on the blade, maybe actually like with how. <laughs> Ooh, is he okay? He's good. All right, he's good. I did break the antenna off of one of these last time, so. Yeah, I think I just want to, yeah, make the glowy eyes. What color of glow for the eyes? So it's tough. Uh, realistically, I'd also want it to be an incredibly pale blue. Um, but I just don't know if that'll show up. I would think it would. And the only reason I say that with such confidence is looking at the... Uh, my lens reflections just mm -hmm. a few minutes ago. It's like even those tiny details are going to. Mm -hmm. 
Null Noil Literally. would dull the colors down. Cool. All right, I probably won't do it then. Um, yeah. Make them look so chilly. Uh, OK. <laughs> Paul says hit them up for glowy eyes. Is it like a, a separate product, or should I just? Can I just mix some really white blueyness together and make it happen, Captain? Just it's a technique. Oh, okay. Glue, glue some very small googly eyes on them. <laughs> Ooh. All right. So I think what I'm gonna do is take the blue. Blue, you. Just gonna take some blue. Actually, can I? Before you mix that in. Yeah. Can I take uh, just a tiny uh, <laughs> brush stroke off that? Yeah, sure. Thank you. It's pretty dried in now because I haven't Sorry. been. Oh, you're gonna do that one? Yeah. yeah go for it. Right. Thank you. Just need Hell yeah. Something. I forgot the uh, the lenses on one of my little dudes here. Hello, neighbor. Could I borrow a brush of paint, please? Yes. Just a wee dab. Just a titch. There we go. Hey, you gotta have, I guess you gotta have like a really fine brush to do the, do his eyes. Yeah, I'm working on a, uh, yeah, 5-0. Oofa. It's actually what I've been using all day today for these super fine details. Okay, so that's going to have to wait for drawing to occur. There. I think I'm very happy with just that little bit of dry brushing on the blade there, I think. Mm. I think that's made it look like cool ice. <laughs> Chitty willy. Yeah. Cool ice. Cool ice. Cool ice. Well, there we go. That's my first man's. Hey. I think he looks pretty damn good. I'm afraid of him already. Yeah, when I get so, yeah, so it's going to be, I'm going to get some snow for the base and get his eyes all glowy. Mm. And there we go. Ben's first yeah. boy. All I have to do is, yeah, do some uh, uh, research. Watch Batman and Robin. <laughs> Not just make those references the whole time. Get yeah. your ice puns already. Yeah. All right. Well, let's scoot over to this guy. God, I really like how this turned out. Um, and I think I'm going to paint his gun. I mean, I guess that's the you know the desired outcome is for each guy to get sort of progressive you progressively happier with them. Yes. Until you go back and look at the first one, you're like, aww. <laughs> yeah. But, you know, that's how it goes. What a baby I was. I've learned so much since then. We're all going to be professionals. Yeah. In the sense that we're getting paid to do this right now. That's true. Mm. That's the truest sense of the word, <laughs> ain't it? In your paints. Yep. That's the meme. Yeah. And the truth. I think what's fun, what's what's a big part of the worries of painting for me, um, is the act of like getting it all together and then sitting down and doing it. Because mm. once I'm like here. And working on it, I'm like, you know what? I don't know why I'm so afraid to paint these guys. It's not that bad. But then when I'm thinking about doing it and it's all not out yet, I'm like, oh, man. Looks over at our unpainted army. I'm going to screw this up. I mean, it can be sometimes good, uh, you know, if you've got a board game with miniatures in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, they can be, you know, that can be great to practice on. Yeah, you were saying that that's what you did for like the your Hero Quest stuff, right? It was like, yeah, Hero Quest uh, back in the day, especially Hero Quest was a great source of, uh, you know, very very cheap uh, models. Not not 
good, not you know, not super ni- super nice models, but you know, good enough. And uh, just to like you know practice different techniques and uh, different dry brushing, you know, try dry brushing, try uh, washing, try doing ink, or try you know try different things on models that aren't you know forty dollars for the mm-hmm. model or whatever. Mm-hmm. That way you don't have to worry. You know, if you've got fifty little goblin miniatures from a from some um, board game or something. Or little little dudes from your uh, um, Sky Tear game. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you screw up a couple of them, it doesn't really matter. Yeah, I mean, it's uh, um, linear orbit saying in chat, like, models have come a long way, too, like, in terms of design and stuff since then. It's true. It's true. Yeah. Okay. Brushes, dying Squirtle. Mm-hmm. It's just got you can probably see it on the <laughs> on the super close up, but uh, it don't have the the <laughs> best tip. Whoa! <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's. Uh... Yeah, this guy's been through some shit. It's a no good. It's a bad bad hair day. Yeah. I think if I like. There we go. Yeah, just get it in the water. There we go. See, good as new. Nice little <laughs> tip to it. So interestingly enough, I didn't mean to do this, but because of like how I like dry brushed down onto the gun a little bit, the gun's got kind of a frosty like glow to that like middle part of the barrel there, which I don't actually think I'm, I'm kind of cool with just keeping maybe. Don't hate it completely? Yeah. Believe that will be classified as a happy little accident. Yeah. <laughs> Twas no oopsie. Man, but Bob Ross could paint like a really sweet army. <laughs> 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 what what army would what faction would Bob Ross play? I mean, in fantasy, there's like wood elves and stuff, right? That's true. But there's in, like the Sylvan. Yeah, in 40k, I don't know. I bet he'd run Crute. <laughs> yeah, maybe. That's true. I do like it's like we're gonna go ahead and uh, we're gonna cause a little pestilence. We're gonna gonna yeah, sacrifice let's... everybody to a great plague and uh, get some boils going. Yeah. Yeah, some plague marines. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, send in some, send in some poxy boys. Yeah. Uh, look, he, I gave, I gave him a big little stick. I'm gonna sneak a <laughs> happy little Nurgle over here. Yeah. The trees in Macbeth. Oh God, yeah. <laughs> Currently not in kill team. Not yet, anyway. Yeah. Predictions. Huh. What's up? I think it's time for a little bit of red on some of these boys. <gasps> Hell yeah. Not nearly as much as I thought there was going to be, but... What are you thinking you're going to... So had... Oh, I see. I'm... Like on like their kind of like battery packs yeah, and I'm stuff. Yeah, I'm going mainly off of box art for this round. Hell yeah. I'm making a, a few uh, changes. Like I said, I'm doing silver for the highlights rather than gold, but... Mm-hmm. Could you uh, hold up the box just, or just so Matt yeah, can get a good shot? Let's get those in there while I go find my paint, actually. Oh, I see. It's just like a little contrasty bit. Yeah. I think we'll... Well, turns out I've got the contrast paint for that. I think I bought the wrong paints. Uh-oh. That's fine. I think I'm, I think I bought the wrong paints a long time ago. <laughs> I just consider this a uh, learning experience. You guys yeah. have like the C-3PO one red arm kind of thing going on. <laughs> Man, that was JJ's you, biggest mistake. Was, was removing his red arm for the last movie. Yeah. He should have still had it and should have never explained it. i have been okay with it. I've, with Star Wars, come to a place of it's stupid fantasy yep so 
just chill out, you know? No, I'm exactly <laughs> behind you, Ben. Yeah. It's, for me, Star Wars is always at its best when it's at its silliest. Yes. And, yeah, wholeheartedly agree. And that's, I, I, I've been getting that feeling from a lot of the most recent work. Yeah. And so, you know, I'm happy to uh, to engage with it on my own and just not talk about it with anyone. Yeah. Yeah, like, there, there's interesting, uh, like, portions of it, right? Like, I, everyone's going to, I think, look at each of these different things that have come out in a different way. Mm -hmm. So for me personally, um, I actually really enjoyed Book of Fett. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not super feeling Obi-Wan. And not for, like, any of the reasons that, like, people, you know, are complaining about it on the internet and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, I'm just not, I'm just, it's just not jiving with me. Young Leia has been making yes, Obi-Wan for I me. Yes, I think she's carrying it, yeah. honestly. That, that, that character, uh, or that actress, channeling late stage Carrie Fisher as well as she is, is yeah. just killing it. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Um, but uh, yeah, like any, any of the late stage sequels and stuff like that, I was totally into. Had a lot of fun with them. It, the thing that kind of bums me out is... You know, there's all sorts of really amazing stuff about the, the, especially when the Mandalorian came out with the the technology that they're using for, the, um, for the 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 Disney Plus series, where they've got the sort of like non the like not green screen, but actually like projecting it, onto the yeah. background, some like just amazing stuff. But. Why does every single show have to take place on mm, freaking Tatooine? Tatooine. Get it's out like, of there, yeah. man! <laughs> it's like we—it's like we might as well be back in the like Star Trek rock quarry, yeah. where it's just like every episode is in the or like a different shot of the rock quarry. It's like, God, dude, for being like what is apparently the backwater, like a backwater planet. So Apparently, everything happens. important in the entire universe happened in, on Tatooine. Yeah, <laughs> I mean, Star Wars to me lately has been at its best when, as well, like they do non-typical canonical characters mm -hmm. when they do new stories and stuff I like that. I love mm. the mods. Yes, in the Book of Boba Fett. Yeah, and the way it was they're like, stupid as hell. Oh, but... The way it was explained to me, finally. Yeah, they're mods because they're riding scooters. Yes. Not because of the modifications. And, and also because of the modifications. Oh, yeah. And, and they also mod their scooters. Yeah. So that means that there is a culture in Star Wars of people who do body modifications and ride scooters. Mm -hmm. Which means that the minute they found out that Darth Vader came from Tatooine... They must be like, oh my god, he's the best yeah, mod. He's the know, godfather of mods. Do you know how many arms he's removed? <laughs> I wonder what his scooter looked like. I really like that thought process, yeah. honestly. And, be, and it was goofy, and they had fun. Yeah. Darth Vader just, like, riding up on a big, like, you know, basically like a, whatever the land speeder equivalent of, like, a Harley. What's up, my mod brothers? <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um. Also, of course, the we have to. The, it's mo the most important thing is to keep these children hidden <laughs> from Darth Vader. So we'll give one to his uncle. Yep. But don't worry. That's the last place you'll look. And don't worry, I'll watch over him. But won't he know your name is Obi-Wan Kenobi? No, no. I'll change my name to Ben Ken Ben, ben Kenobi. Kenobi. You're gonna keep the last. You're gonna keep your last name. You know, the, like <laughs> one of the major <laughs> indicators. Nobody said, ah, General Obi-Wan <laughs> Kenobi. They said, ah, <laughs> General Kenobi. Also, if you want to, uh, it'll, you know, if the plan is to hunt down all the Jedi in the galaxy, just go for anybody uh, wearing a heavy robe. Yep. Or just outlaw heavy robes. Yeah. There's one, I ended up deleting the tweet because I'm like, ah, people might take this the wrong way. But there's a scene where he's like wearing all of like his like the robe and like all like the very like loose fitting sort of gear and whatnot. And he's just like, he looks like this really tired dude wearing like all these like loose, like covering clothing that would keep you out of the sun, but is like nice and loose fitting. And I was like, this is every dude, this is every 30 year old at like 
uh, Burning Man. <laughs> like every every thirty year old boy is just like him. He's just like looking like you know hydrated, but just like tired and like kind of. And it's it's him looking like being like, oh my god, Leia, where are you going? Kind of a thing. And uh, yeah, it's it's fun. It's just not like it hasn't been my favorite of it. So mm. yeah, yeah. Um, which is the same thing. Which is probably a little bit of. Um, I don't know, weird to say, because I know that there's been different people feeling about it. Um, but I, it's kind of how I've been feeling about um, uh, Miss Marvel as uh, well. I, I I haven't seen that yet. Is it, is, it's it, good. I heard I heard maybe maybe it like it certainly started off very positively. Yeah, but. it's it's really good. It's just not my jam. Mm-hmm. It's um, Shot very. It's it's the first kind of I think Marvel pro- property in the MCU um, that's come out that is more um, teen romp kind of yes, centric. Yeah. Like that's that's kind of the vibe. It's earlier. <laughs> It's Scott Pilgrim, but with a higher CGI budget, <laughs> <laughs> in some ways, um, and without whiny white teen boys. Um, so I guess, I guess so Scott was like twenty, but so uh, it's like you're know, not necessarily into it, but it's not really for you. Yeah, it's great. It's a good piece of work. Oh, it's fair. It's it's just not. It's it's the first one that's not been my jam. Yeah, um, which has like been great. I think about like these MCU sort of things that have come out because. Um, I was talking to uh, Andrew Ferguson uh, when I went to Vancouver, um, and he was like, "Yeah, I, I don't, I, I didn't even finish Loki because I was just like not feeling it." And I was like, "That's interesting because Loki's been my favorite one <laughs> that's coming." <laughs> yeah, out. I, I really dug Loki. Yeah, Loki yeah. was absolutely my jam. Um, so yeah, mm-hmm. turns out not every piece of media that comes from a franchise has to be for you. <laughs> this is something I talked about extensively on the Lermans. Oh yeah, it is the idea that yeah, you know what? A lot of stuff doesn't have to be for you, mm-hmm. and uh, sometimes going into that is uh, y- y- you unlock something you never thought you'd see before, which is how I deal with foreign media. Mm-hmm. You know, Miss Marvel wasn't made for us. Miss Marvel was made specifically for teenage girls, specifically who are not white. Yes, yeah. The and I mean the expansiveness of the Marvel universe means that they do have like they've got you know. Inroads and all these different, you know, you can tell a story about this. You can tell a story, you know, you can do the, the sort of, daredevil, street level kind of stuff, and you can do the intergalactic stuff, and you can do the, you know, yeah. inter. Whatever cosmic stuff that Loki is doing, mm-hmm. you know, you you've got a lot of range of types of stories that you can tell within that realm. Whole worlds. Yeah. Level. My uh, and and my biggest thing on it too, and why like I didn't, I haven't like tweeted anything about it or stood on some pedestal, is because I'm a cis white dude, and I you don't need my opinion oh, on yeah. if Miss Marvel is good or not, because it doesn't matter. <laughs> like I'm I'm not gonna take up uh, you know these spaces that uh, really we don't need <laughs> another fucking echo chamber we of things. You know, that, that, that was the thing I was going off on about today. Oh, yeah? Uh, yeah. That, you know, that, uh, there was this tweet that went on earlier this week that was uh, the biggest cinema sin was that uh, it was convincing people that nitpicking is, actu- is criticism. Yes, yeah. And I agree with that, but I think the deeper cinema sin is convincing people that everyone needs to have an opinion on everything. That, that I agree with, because, like, I find nitpicking to be funny, mm-hmm. but like I don't, can, I don't take it into the greater sense yeah. of because it's like, like, like it I, can sometimes be fun. Yes, just just to sort of be Here, like. Here's my example of it with recent Obi Wan. Uh, I'm going to try to do this as spoiler free as possible. There's a scene where he's being chased by someone. Mm-hmm. <sighs> okay, this is episode two or three. So okay. if you haven't seen it. Just spoilers for spoiler for a hot years. second. It's I guess it's kind of hard to do it. You good? All right. He's being chased by Darth Vader. Yep. Right through this area, and he lights. The, he knocks over the thing, and the area lights on fire. Right, and then Obi Wan is on there, and he like drags him through. Mm-hmm. Right, and it's like this horrifying thing. Right, and then he puts out the fire with the Force. Right, and then to save him, the girl shoots the barrel. 
reigniting the flames, and then the droid comes and picks Obi-Wan and runs away. And Darth Vader's like, there's nothing I can do about this fire. <laughs> and is like perplexed by this, yeah. and like, well, they're on the other side of this, this burning thing. I can't do anything. So that was the only moment where I was like, Huh? <laughs> but it was like not even like a big deal. All right, spoilers over. Look, Ben, it's a union thing. Unless, yeah. <laughs> unless I made the fire myself, I can't put it. Yeah, out. yeah. So this is not my table. <laughs> I mean, yeah. in, internal logic is always something that I, 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 I like, you know, to maintain within. Like, you know, if you say the force can do a thing, then that's cool. You know, it can be magic or it can be whatever. Mm -hmm. But you know, once you say, if you say that the Force can do a thing, then the Force can do that thing. And yeah. so if it doesn't do that thing later on, it's like, well, what happened to that? Yeah. Anyways, we said spoilers are over, so I won't talk about it anymore. But that was <laughs> that was my one example of like, this is so nitpicky of me <laughs> to think about this. But also, I like, can't stop looking at it because it was weird. But, yeah. Yeah. Uh. But anyways, so that's why I just watch a lot of cartoons. That's what I do with oh, my Oh yeah, there's mm -hmm. absolutely nothing in cartoons that needs to be nitpicked yeah. at all. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, and what's great about cartoons is that the, the fan community around them is super wholesome. Yeah. Well, speaking of super wholesome and good, um, there's a show uh, that just recently got put on Netflix, uh, which was based on a comic. And the first time I ever experienced it was actually through a YouTube channel called Cartoon Hangover, which was like Ooh, Fred yeah. Raider kind of stuff, yep. uh, called Dead End uh, that just came out. And it is very good. I highly recommend it if you like uh, watching cartoons and stuff like that, because uh, it's the big gay. Mm. It's got the, it, oh, it's it's so gay. <laughs> it's, on, it's on Netflix? It's on Netflix, yeah. It's uh, it's quite good, I recommend it. Good. Go give it a, go give it a looky-loo. Called Dead End. Because the main know. character, in fact, is trans. Hey. Yeah. Um, yeah. Quite good. More representation in all forms of media, please. Mm hmm. I I started watching Centaur World. And yes. I couldn't couldn't that was a little bit too much for me. Centaur World is the first of the these kind I, of like I love the concept of it, yeah. but it yeah, I couldn't quite <laughs> uh, it does get a little bit less constantly making loud noises all the time for the sake of making loud noises. I totally felt the same way the, when I first uh, started watching it. The, um but the it, fact it that does like, come around. In the first episode, like Two times, I think, so at least at least twice, people are like, "Oh, that person, yeah, she's a little much." Yeah, and it's like, or you could have just, you know, written it so she wasn't. That so she person. wasn't a little much. Yeah. So that this would be more pleasant to watch. But yeah. okay. Yep. While we're on the topic of long-running series with the mm -hmm. questionable. Continuities yep. and uh, very angry fan bases. Got to recommend to anyone who can access it. Or if anyone's looking to get into Mobile Suit Gundam, mm -hmm. go on. They just released a new film okay. in Japan, and I believe you, you can find it in various places. It'll probably end up on Netflix at some point soon called uh, Kukuro's Dones Island. Okay. And it's based off of episode 15 of the original 1979 series, uh, an episode that was never released in North America and has been scrubbed from all uh, compilations on DVD because huh. it was so bad. It's just <laughs> really the, the amount of off model shots for Gundams and what it's, it's where a lot of the memes of bad looking Gundams come from. Okay. But the film itself is fantastic and actually I would consider it a really good introduction to the series. Like it, it introduces the characters in such a way that if you haven't seen a Gundam before, this is the time to, okay. It's, it's a really good way to get into the original series. Yeah, my Gundam knowledge is, uh, I know who Big Zam is, mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and uh, that's it. Uh, Mr. Big Zam, yes. Yes, I know Big Zam. Well, it's, Big Zam doesn't show up, unfortunately. Ah. Well, I'm out again. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Yeah, a couple of people were talking about it. The one show that I know is kind of in that same realm of shows that are made by people who have grown up watching cartoons and now want to make their own cool cartoons yes. with like cool themes and stuff. It's sort of in the Steven Universe, She-Ra, mm -hmm. you know, that Evangelion sort of realm. Thing? Uh, is Amphibia. And Amphibia is similar to Centaur World in the way that it's just a little too kitty. I think in 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 like the the beginning that I'm going through right now uh, that I can't quite get through it, um, which is like I mean it could be said of anything, right? It's like the first episode, so like the first couple episodes of Steven Universe is like, you know, Steven turns his hands into yeah. cats and you know, like all, all <laughs> yeah. those ones that they have, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. ostensibly for like yeah. Avatar: The Last Airbender, another mm -hmm. good example. Of this. Yeah. Um, but I will say, it, for me personally, if you're if you're into cartoons like that, just follow Alex Hirsch like wherever it kind of goes. Right now, I find like all of the stuff like Gravity Falls, and he worked oh, yeah. on um, most recently Owl House and stuff. Uh, um, oh, if you, uh, I I might be late to the party on this one, but if you haven't uh, seen uh, Kipo among the Wonder Beasts, yes, Kipo is fantastic. That is. So good yes, and the whole way through, and so good and just a has a wonderful sort of satisfying conclusion. Yes, too. it like doesn't go on for too. long. It doesn't go on for too long, and it has a nice, really mm. nicely tied up story. Oh, only because I saw it just happen in chat. There, got a shout out to all the uh, Infinity Train fans. Yes, yep. Uh, that was another one that started, or at least that I recall first seeing on. Uh, cartoon Hangover, oh, okay. and then uh, yeah, seemed to get picked up for like a full-on thing. A few seasons of that. Yeah, I enjoy that. There's an entire season that is just basically a trans allegory. <laughs> it's very, very cool. With characters from previous seasons, it's yeah. great. Got the purple. I'm glad I ended up going with that. I think it just adds that nice little cool mm. pop. So actually, that leads me to a question. You brought up the Owl House. Yes. Uh, when are we going to make our hoodie screen accurate? <laughs> can we? I mean, can we just cut that face out and insert it onto like Studio C door? Put a tube on my neck. <laughs> <laughs> Who's gonna huff me? <laughs> Who's? <laughs> yeah. Like, that'll be that. This will be the is. next uh, TTC project, right? There is. We'll get. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome, everybody! <laughs> Wait, that's like two Mickey Mouse. <laughs> oh, I'm extremely static right now. <laughs> wow. Nope. Thought I could hootie, but no. I love how long he got to sit on set, too, before Road Quest actually came yes, out. Yes, that was, oh, yeah. beautiful. For a while, he was just some owl. Why? Eh, don't ask. Yeah. It will be explained. It looks like he's got like a thousand yard stare going on right now. Yeah. <laughs> this, I like, this hoodie's seen some stuff. <laughs> yeah, I like a lot of the cool things that I think will pop I like throwing on set. In fact, actually on set right now is a recent addition. Uh, behind the, yes, the the box with the, with the, the hamster <laughs> on it. We got sent one of those fancy um, magic Alders things. Geeks, yeah. uh, and it had a big latch and a giant handle on the bottom. That I actually took apart <laughs> so that it would work on set yes. as like a set piece. But like the the handle was screwed with really long screws, oh. and then there was a big, very heavily glued in divider in the middle. So what I ended up doing was like with one like flat head, just kind of getting it enough so that I could then take a small drill bit in my hands and then turn, turn it up. like that. And then the other one was way too dead end, so I just stuck the flat head in and then cranked the handle <gasps> around. <Yep. laughs> it was a good way. And now we've got this really cool thing on set. All the tricks. Yeah. Uh, all right. So I think what I need to start off with is painting this blue with a paintbrush. I've got too many paintbrushes going on now. Oof. Pretty sure that's one of those, like, you can never have too many paintbrushes. That's true, yeah. Big old grip. I'm beginning to feel that right now, actually. So, someone was saying Gravity Falls ended too soon, and while I do agree because I obviously wanted more Gravity Falls, I like the concept that the the whole conceit of the show was that it was taking place over the course of a summer, right? Yeah. And summer's got to end. Right. Yeah. When you're 
sometimes it's good to have, you know, things that end sometimes. Yeah. I frequently reference things. I got Nicole to start saying things are straight blanching. <laughs> Which is straight Blanchin by Little Big Dog, which oh, is a rap. Sorry, I <laughs> thought I, I thought this was a reference to the Golden Girls. Sometimes. No, no, no. That would no, no. be straight Blanchin. Yeah, I mean it could. <laughs> I'm a Blanchin girl, we Blanchin. I live up in a mansion. <laughs> Feeling mighty rose tonight. Great. I might actually walk away with like my army. Almost done. Jeez. <laughs> <laughs> I don't feel too good about myself then here. I think you're doing great. I mean, okay. <laughs> You've got uh, significantly less dudes to go through. <laughs> or significantly more, more dudes yes. to go through. No, I've been saving this red though, because it's... <sighs> I do love red hi highlights on my dudes. Red, mm -hmm. white, and black has always been the color scheme I've wanted to have on a... Yeah, here I can get this out of the way so that Matt yeah. can get a much better shot of not this bird. There we go. I'm not sure if the contrast paints are working as well as they're meant to, though, with the uh, the airbrush shading. Or it could just be that these are very thin paints to begin with, and I just need to do a few more layers. Mm-hmm. I mean, contrast paints are sort of intended to be quite thin, right? They're sort mm -hmm. of intended to kind of go into the cracks and the things to sort of, to sort of uh, act as kind of a highlight as well, or a highlight and a shadow as well as a... Yeah. As well as a base color. That's why I was figuring I might have bought the growing paints, but... We'll see. Always go over it with Matt. Dollar store stuff. Mm-hmm. No one can stop me. <laughs> so that means that while I let these things dry... Oh, is that time again? It is indeed. So we might want to take ourselves a short little break, get up, as I said, stretch the legs, let things dry, and uh, we'll be back with just a bit more. Tinker Tailor's Solar Fry and Warham's Painting after this. Don't go all the way away. Keep yourself hydrated, though. Welcome back to Tinker Tailor's Solar Fry here on the mighty Loading Ready Run Video Entertainment Network. And Batman the Animated Series is the best Japanese anime out of the 1990s. Yeah, I'd hard agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> We're painting War M's! <laughs> uh, you're, you're, you're finished up your, your dry brushing? Uh, yeah, I'm kind of... I think my goal for the... to for this the end of the stream is I want everybody to be in uh, their the frosty armor sort of uh, look, which is... Oh, these, these, these front dudes here are just looking... Yeah, the... Absolutely. Uh, yeah, I'm really, Crisp. I'm actually very, very stoked with how this, and how easily and repeatable the, the frosty armor look yeah. has, uh, has been going. <laughs> repeatable is uh, actually what, probably the, the key word, yeah. honestly, when you're yeah. doing a painting like this. I'm actually intrigued, because I do want to pick up, uh, you know, potentially some Sisters of Silence, so emulating something like this onto characters that actually have a lot more flesh showing mm -hmm. and stuff. So I'm going to have some very spooky looking ladies, which I think will be very cool. I, that, boys. I like that it looks like your your paintbrush yeah. is the right color for to be like a giant pole arm that one of them are, is carrying. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, kind of. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, I kind of got a little bit of a snowy... So I think this guy's bottom of his shield melted somehow. I have no idea what did it, but you can see at the bottom. Uh, yeah, that does look a bit melty. Yeah, and I don't know what happened. Maybe it's That a, being said... Maybe it's a snow shield. Yeah, well, okay. it's a happy little accident that it kind of looks like a beat-up shield, because if I just kind of do this mm -hmm. a bunch... It kind of just looks like it's got just like a little oh, bit of a snowy yeah. thing. God, like a bat, like a yeah, <laughs> like a fender in you know, Alberta in December. It actually kind of works, yeah. 
Did you use a spray paint to base coat? I it is like a, a spray paint primer, mm -hmm. but it's like a war hammy or yeah, hammer use, one. So it's a model kit spray. Uh, yeah. But uh, yeah, who knows? Huh. But yeah, it could, that definitely looked like uh, yeah some like frost yeah. or something on the bottom of his shield. Yeah, I might have just done it too close. That actually very much could have been it because the shield sticks out pretty far. But that's cool because uh, yeah, I'm uh, armor wise. I think I've got that frost look down. We're gonna get that cape nice and purple. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think I'm actually gonna color the interior of the shield the same sort of ice that I'm doing for the, Ooh. the blade, which nice. will be a difficult thing, but I feel like I'm up to the challenge. So we'll see how yeah, it goes. Spe nice. yeah as, you, as you were saying, that all the, the little, little filigree and stuff, it's gonna be a real tricky one. Yeah, definitely. Well, hello there, sir. Uh, uh, We've got a special guest joining us shortly. Huh. Well, let's uh, make some room. God, he... yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that this that Jacob streams and then just like in the name of Kill Team busts his sure. ass all the way down yeah. here just so that just he can it. hang out <laughs> and talk about Warhammer. I've actually, I put out the schedule for us for the upcoming, like, who's going to be on what stream for AFK. And I was like, all right, we've got five of us, so someone's going to have to be on all four. And it was like, no doubt in my mind that it should just I be Jacob. I wonder who it's going to yeah. be. <laughs> well, hello there, hello, buddy. Gentlemen. How's hello. it going? If you, wanna, if you want to move this away. Oh, beautiful. Great. Thank That'll you. Be space. I, um, I... Of course you have a Babendum mug. <laughs> of course you do. That I'm, is thanks to I'm glad you know fan. his name, because I didn't. That's I, amazing. I just know him as Michelin guy. I will never forget that his name is Babendum, mm -hmm. because that was one of the first things that I ever heard out of Ian's mouth. <laughs> like, like in general? Like, just in general. Was like, oh, that's very, Babendum. Yeah. It Hello, was, my it name was, is Ian. Do you know who this is? is? Yes, yes. <laughs> Have you heard the good word about Babendum? Yeah. <laughs> Hi, the Michelin man's name is Babendum. I'm Ian Horner. Nice to meet you. <laughs> I really should introduce myself to people like that more. You should. Oh, you 100%. should put it on like your business card. Yeah. I actually came over so fast I forgot my minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Whoops. <laughs> well, now you can just hang out. Whoopsie doodles. Yeah. <laughs> how's uh, how's the the work <clears throat> crew going? I made a dumb. Oh? Uh, well, okay. So I don't know or didn't know how to play Kill Team. Yeah. Uh, so I originally was like, okay, here's kind of how it's configured and here's like sort of the squad that I would like to play. And yeah. I was like, oh, cool. Grots are kind of like goblins. I love goblins. Orcs are just dumb. Uh, I'm going to play orcs. Yeah. And I found out that uh, orcs have two configurations. You can do the... Clan commandos, mm -hmm. which don't really have a lot of uh, variety. It's just clan commandos. You don't really get to like customize or pick which you know people are in there. Yeah. So I was like, cool, green skins, awesome, great. And you can do, you know, you've got your kill team, and then you've got like fire teams. Holy shit, those look good. So sorry. <laughs> oh no, my those... god. Holy look at his fuck, <laughs> dude. You think they're turning out okay? Can I? Yeah. Can I? Oh my god. Yeah. And then I'll tell you about my orcs. But holy. <laughs> <gasps> Mother, Bears. my frosty death. That really, dude. The, the amount of my heart that just went like, oh hell yeah, because <laughs> I've been very kind of wow. I'm like I hope they look okay, dude. You've been killing it with these. Thank you. Oh my, I'm trying not to swear. Oh, I. These are... oh, is this not a swearing program? I, get, I, I always <clears throat> tell people you get what I mean. Look, okay, look, I have lit enough things on fire. <laughs> That everyone's allowed one. Sure, and, that, and every time you do, that allots like another one yeah. to the... the, the yeah. Yeah. <gasps> you posed these so well, too. Thank you. Oh, my goodness. Yeah, they're supposed to be like kind of frosty Death Knight dudes. I didn't want them to be golden yeah, boys. I yeah. wanted them to... Dude, this is... I mean, I love I love winter-themed stuff. Like, like, like ice... Ch ch dude. Dude. Thank you. Oh my goodness. The slight variant too in shade uh, from the details, like the blue going into the purple, mm -hmm. and the highlights that you've done. Oh my goodness, the highlighting is just 
incredible. And I'm baby, baby learning about this, but man. Do you want to know this trick? Yeah. It's dry brushing, my I man. haven't learned how to do that yet. It is <laughs> literally what is kicking, yep. what is doing this for me. Games you Workshop you hates you. You glob a One bunch trick. of paint on a dirt, a bad brush. A bad brush. Okay. You get almost all of it off. Uh huh. And then. Just. Okay. That's it, man. Yep. This is all he's been doing all day. That's all I've been doing for this whole stream. Wow. Okay. I got to try that. Yeah. It's actually like. As somebody who has wow. massive painting anxiety, it's been what's really doing it. Are you? Yeah, but like the 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 dude, that's so hard to do. Look at the little freaking fringes. Is that the how purple your fringes doing? here. Yeah. Did you, uh, no, <laughs> shut up. I'm not talking about my orcs right now. <laughs> Damn it! Oh my god! Orcs. No, dude. The little fringes, like you've got no splatter. What the? F Man, my orcs look like straight trash no compared way. to this. <laughs> That's untrue. See, no, no, I'm proud of the work that I've done, but I, I also like I recognize that I'm in, I'm in the learning phase. That's me too. Like this is my like first kind of like paint same. things. Go fuck yourself. <laughs> There's you, my you one. Already, you already used your one. There's my one. <laughs> <laughs> See, but Jacob, the trick is it's it's not that that there isn't any splatter on it. It's that it's actually just all splatter. Yeah. <laughs> huh? No, no, it's it's the the like the the painting within the lines, like getting the 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 like the purple up to the knuckle guard on these. Like, that's really hard to do. Have you done a wash on this one already? No, I'm not doing a wash on them. You're not doing a wash on them? Nope, leaving them as is. Mm, my first, this is really my <laughs> first like, painting job here. Dude, this is incredible. <laughs> Thank wow, you. man. <laughs> Fuck. Well deserved. Yeah, but, I, but if you could do me a favor. Yeah. Uh, just And fuck all the way off. <laughs> um, that would be... I'm sorry. I've, on the next three, I won't swear. Hey, I mean, on the bright side, uh, we're probably far enough into the YouTube video that they don't find it. <laughs> oh, is that a TOS thing? There's uh, like a yeah. YouTube is like. Oh, like, I didn't know. I thought we were just. Oh no. <gasps> I messed up. That's oh, no, no, no. okay. <laughs> How are your orcs doing, Jacob? Uh. So as I was saying, <laughs> take this away from me. It sure. makes me mad. Yeah. Um, uh, so a as I was saying, um, so I decided to go to the uh, to to the Greenskins. Yeah. You know, do the the Greenskin kill team because I was like, cool. There's more. Which variations. I helped enable. Yeah. Oh yeah, you 100% did um, because I, I I bought uh, ten ten uh, grots and uh, I was like neat because you can switch out one boy for two grots. Mm -hmm. And I was like, oh, cool. I can have more dumb goblins. No. Great. Beautiful. I'm going to do that. Their stats are just horrible. They're but so there's, bad. They're so bad. But, but there's you get a lot so of, many of you them. You get so many I'm of them. I'm actually very worried to fight you because I have four mans. So my idea was to get ten grots on the field because I've got those. Yeah. And then you can get five either from the commandos Specialists or uh, um, or boys. Mm -hmm. So I got some boys off of you, and I got some commandos off of Cameron because I wanted because I don't know how to play. I don't know what configuration I want. Yeah. I can I can learn the rules and be like, oh, I think this is going to be fun. I think this is going to be fun, but I don't know like if. If if boys or commandos should be the way to go for like my other five, and because I was like, cool, all right, great. So I, I I I got some off of you. I bought some off of you. And I bought the commandos off of Cameron, and then I learned more about the rules and I looked at the stats, and they have the same stats. Oh, no. oh commandos and boys. Yes. Yeah. It's like flavor things. I think. Well, I think they get like other. Yeah. Loadouts, but yeah. Right, but now I have them. And they must be painted. I can't mm. not have them yeah. and not paint them. But I also got enough boys. So if I wanted, if I wanted to field an all boys team, I can have two heavy gunners. There's, I. Four custodies just seems like a really great idea. Is pretty much what I'm saying. <laughs> I've you got, know what, but you know what the interesting part about this is? 
I want to paint more. <laughs> Do you want to help me paint some commandos? Uh, sure. <laughs> All right, because yeah. I've got a week and a half to do that. Oh, oh right. That's right, you're Because I uh, still have to Yeah, I gotta paint. Them. I gotta paint all of our terrain. <laughs> I well, mean, never Ian's mind. Got some, yeah. No, ne then good. Yeah. I'll handle the commandos. Don't you worry about it. Uh, <laughs> yeah. I mean, yeah, you just get as as Twitch chat is saying, you just get a you get a shame pile. I uh, no, I will find out what I want to play through the course of our game, mm -hmm. and then I am going to uh, either sell or give away uh, or donate what I do not want because uh, may I use your please uh, do your case as an example. I do not want more than what will fit into this. Yeah. I want one, maybe two kill teams to play with for fun, and that is it. Mm -hmm. I have very strict rules about it. It's a good it's a good way to not become me and have too many things of a hobby. Oh, don't don't get me wrong, my dear friend. You want to. Oh my <laughs> god. Dude, when you and I you and I were having a conversation about like, hey, I've got a bunch of orcs and I'll sell them to you pretty cheap and I've got a bunch, like a ton, and you can just have them for this much money. And I looked at my phone and went <laughs> <laughs> I'm also trying to push my uh, Slanesh demonets onto him because I know that'd be his jam too. I, so our friend Erica Cole yeah. recently had a birthday. Yeah. And I wish I'd known about your offer for the Demonettes because that's what I got her for her birthday. Oh, oh really? Yes. Because oh. she had mentioned on Twitter about two months ago, before I even learned that we were doing Kill Team, before you invited me, because I was just like, I'm just getting into Warhammer now. Mm -hmm. uh, well, before she I even needs learned some about more. that. <laughs> right. <laughs> I, well, let's let her know. Yeah. Uh, just in case Hi, she Erica. wants some more. Hey, <laughs> hey, hey. Clip it. That's the ticket. Hey, you're about to get a call. Yeah. Real quick. Yep. Just to show you, like, how, because it's like you're like, oh, the, the highlights and yeah. stuff like that. This is white. You just dab it on, right? Okay. And then you want to get as much off your brush as you can. Okay. Right? And then you go down to your thing, and it's just... <gasps> That looks so good. And that's all you have to do. That looks so good. See, my philosophy right now is a wash will hide all of your sin. Yeah, I mean, the null oil as being liquid skill <clears throat> uh, that a lot of people say is, uh, yeah, it, 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 it makes it look really, really good. Yeah, it, I, that's one of my favorite parts of painting them right now is getting the wash on to have everything come together. May I? Yeah, I'm. Please do. I'm okay. fully subscribed please, to the Church don't. of Dry Brush. I, I, I'm now. currently <laughs> dealing with brush strokes and being angry at myself. Yeah, I remember Mother. about 20 minutes ago you were like, and it's going to be <laughs> brush down time. Yeah. Dude. Yeah, Ian's look amazing. Yeah, I'm they're so, so clean. Into it. Thank you. <gasps> oh, the metallic on the details. Bud, oh my goodness, how did you even do that? Which one? The freaking, the lenses on the inside, they're faintly blue. So and not everything else is blue. <laughs> so it's black, this brush, these eyes, very closely tap. And then, afterwards, you go in with the white and tap just the upper right corner to give it that highlight. I can't even conceptualize that at this point. That's, That's right, you got orc on the brain. Yeah. So good. <laughs> I, I do. I'm, yeah. It, no. Oh, yeah. Those boys just want to be dipped. They kind of do. <laughs> well, no, I, 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 well, I don't have enough to dip them. I, I just, I just slop it off. Slaughter them. Yeah, I just, just <laughs> blah, 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 blah. it's not, elegance is not part of my technique at this point. Uh, vigorous swearing, absolutely part of my style. Though. Yeah, you're just role playing your characters at yeah. this point. So I've been looking up like how orcs traditionally talk in, okay. in Warhammer. Uh -oh. yeah. You know, like because if I'm going to give them names, I want them to be as canonical yeah. as possible. Uh, and did they don't care? There's not a lot of consistency. Yeah, I was going to say consistency, cohesiveness uh, to it. So it's going to be. Uh, yeah, it's good. So what it's you're saying? Be great. I, they're, they're, they don't have a language academy. <clears throat> yeah. 
I if mean, they do, it's spelled with a K. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Yes, I, I, I've always uh, heard of, of Warhammer orcs conceptualized as basically like football, English football hooligans. Yeah, I've heard that too. Uh, yeah. And so, yeah, they tend to have the, yeah, I guess that that's, that's sort of an accent, but it depends on where you go, I guess. I played the uh, the demo for uh, Shooters, Blood, and Teeth. Mm. And that was incredible. My buddy Ryan and I uh, played it on uh, the Yzbrid stream uh, on Tuesday because Steam wasn't working for me. Uh, so we had to find something else to do. And we were just like, okay, well, normally we're playing, you know, Warhammer Chaos Gate. Hold on, sorry, excuse me. Warhammer 40k Chaos Gate Demon Hunters. Warhammer 40k colon Chaos Gate yep. dash Demon Hunters. That's all right. Have you heard of the recent set? <laughs> Match of the Gathering Commander Legends Battle for Baldur's Gate Dungeon and Dragons. <laughs> Have wow. you heard the good word? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Jeez. Yeah, just how many, uh, how many things can we wham jangle in it was, there? It was a lot. It was, it was a heck of a lot of fun. It, and it's really dumb. Mm. Yes. It's so dumb. Yeah. Important. The, these are just tremendous. Oh, sorry. Oh, you, that's right. Your units can fly, some of them. <laughs> the ice blade. <laughs> it came along really well. I like how the ice, oh. the, uh, the little ice blade, I think. Oh. Mm, yeah. Turned out quite that's good. come out real nice. What? These guys are going to get embarrassed if they come up against flamethrowers. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Turns out uh, ice as uh, your primary melee is... Uh, yeah. Ben, they, those, look, those look really, really good. Thank you. I, man, Ian, I just the... Because you're airbrushing most of these, right? Uh, they started with an airbrush base, but there's been a lot of brushing onto it as well. I, I do love those, like, the, like, transparent lift up bases to show the flying guys. <laughs> yeah, they're getting coated with primer <laughs> later. <laughs> oh, you're going to you're going to paint the ba you're going to paint the well, uh Well, some of them I've already uh, painted the stocks enough that I'm I'm thinking yeah, I'm just going to give them a no normal basage. May I ask a, a technique question? Yes, you may. You have both put your paints on what look like wet wax paper, parchment mm -hmm. paper. Oh, actually. So I'm. This is a wet palette, but I'm not actually using it as a wet palette. Mm -hmm. But what that does is it. Uh, it's it's basically just a nice little thing that uh, keeps it, that keeps the paper nice and moist, yeah. so that like you can kind of see what's happening over here. <clears throat> uh, it doesn't dry. The paint doesn't dry up as you're going for like yeah. longer sessions. Nearly so okay. Yeah. In fact, if, if you if you're using a proper uh, wet palette with the sponge in it and a good cover, uh -huh. you can even theoretically cover it over and stick it in the fridge and come back to it a couple days later and, yeah, paint and it would still, still be moist. okay. That's really cool. Because yeah. I've been using a, a combination of contrast and, and uh, latex, or latex, sorry. Acrylic? Acrylic, thank you. That yeah. was the word I was looking for. Yeah, and acrylic. Um, like for the big areas, I've been using contrast paints just because you can just slop it on. And mm -hmm. I have, as I've mentioned, uh, too many orcs. Sloppy boy. Uh, too many yes. orcs. Yep. <clears throat> I have too many orcs. Um, so, I don't have a leader figure though. That's something that I noticed. That's something you might want to like that. That. Uh, well, I seems... think there's. I think there's one in the clan commando set. Okay. Good. Yeah. Okay. I think there's one in the. Stop it. <laughs> <laughs> I saw that smile. Just the, like, hey, ah, you can come on down to Ben's <laughs> Orc Wear <laughs> Shop. <laughs> I got so many orcs. We got orcs every color, so long as that color is green. Yeah, you want mork? <laughs> I got more. I got more. Have some. Have smork. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have any gork. You gotta go yeah, see you my gotta, brother. You gotta go. You, you gotta, gotta see my, my yeah. My you gotta see my brother for that one. Because yeah. <clears throat> oh. I I I haven't. So wet palettes don't do anything with the application. It's just kind of like as you're working. Because I've been doing. Uh, uh, batch painting. I'm doing one color at a time, mm -hmm. just lining all my my uh, my orcs yeah. up, and then just doing like here's this color. Yep. I'm doing all of the skin on all of them because then by the time the the first one that I've painted, 
or I'm sorry, by the time I'm I, at the last one, the first one that I've painted is dry. Mm -hmm. So that I can pick it up and then go to the next color. Yeah, that's a great uh, way to do it. So is there any reason to not paint out of the pot? No, that's, and that's, a, well, two reasons you might not want to paint out of the pot. Okay. First of all, uh, you might note that uh, if you're using uh, Citadel colors, yep. these pots are very bad for uh, maintaining a seal. Lots of dry paint likes to get into the back, okay. and the paint itself starts to dry <coughs> out very quickly. Okay. So what I'll do is I'll open the thing, use a uh, a sacrificial brush to bring the paint into the wet palette, okay. and that also allows me to thin it a little bit better to get consistency that's going to be correct for what I'm doing, which I haven't got on this one, but... How do you know what consistency to go for? So that's where you'll see a lot of uh, a lot of YouTuber painters will you know paint their thumb or their... Uh, or their finger before they actually do it, or thin the paint out, so you can see what sort of a line you're going to get there. Whereas if I thin that out even more, you can see right away, it's, oh wait, that's too thin. Oh no, that's too thin. Oh. And you know before you put brush to model what it's going to be like. Neat. The other thing that it... Uh, that's that, intense. The other thing that makes uh, a wet palette very nice for use is that you can lay down different colored paints there and let's say, well, maybe I want a bit lighter gray. Well, let's take some of the uh, the white and mix it in with the gray. And I've still got my gray and I've still got my white, and now I've got a, a middle color there. Neat, okay. So if you want to shade your colors in a different way, then just straight out of the pot. Okay. Yeah. I don't think I'm quite there yet. It's not a necessary thing to do, but... You literally just kind of pick it up as you go along. That's me right now. Yep. Making mistakes and getting messy, getting misfrizzled over here. <laughs> I'm talking big, but uh, I'm still learning as well. Yeah. Uh, cool. So good. Besides glowy <laughs> eyes, I think this guy's done. Nice. Ooh. Ooh. Oop. Look at his ass, Twitch chat. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. What you're not getting, Twitch chat, is the slight sparkliness of everything. It's there's a little bit of yeah gorgeous. sparkle to the metal. That looks incredible. Mm. Thank you. I just need to get some glowy eyes in there, and uh, sun's out, buns out. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah, I think I actually want a bit more paint there. I'm, boy. See, nope. I think one of the only ways because I. I <laughs> I, if 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 I'm getting the rules right, these your boys have a massive soak. Yes. Right? Like they're just hard to damage. Uh, yes. Okay. And they have a lot of health. <clears throat> and they have a lot of health. So they're okay. uh, a typical, I think, unit where it's going to have somewhere between five to eight wounds, yeah. I would say, or five to nine. Okay. Uh, each of my guys has eighteen, ah. with the leader having nineteen. Wow. Um, every one of them has a two-up save. Right. God, I'm going to have to so, you so hard. Why are you afraid of my very squishy goblins? Uh, because uh, it's not about killing, right? Like, killing can be a part of the game, but you're trying yeah. to go for objectives and stuff to get victory Despite points. Despite the name of the game. Right. Yeah, so... The team got, part is the really important yeah, part of you've the got, kill yeah, team. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you've got so many dudes that, like, you might just be able to spread out and get more points. In and do way. the thing, okay. Yeah, um, but also, as uh, Brownie says, uh, probability. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If I get, I get to roll more dice yeah. many times. Yes. Yeah. But the my goblins, even though there's a lot of them, they don't get to take advantage of com command points. Mm -hmm. Command. Oh, interesting. Things. I can't. They don't get. I can't use any of my special spend. Oh, your point. command points on them. Yeah, yeah, command points. Yeah, I can't use any command points on them. Mm -hmm. Only for whatever other five Interesting. I decide to have. Yeah, I'd have to look into them. But yeah, I mean, it's like, <clears throat> you know, if you roll, if you've got ten guys and each of them have two shots and you're rolling 20 dice, yeah, one's bound to hit me. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Um, yeah, and the guys who hold shields, uh, they have a four plus in vulnerability, in vulnerability save, which means if there's like a thing that reduces armor or something like that, I can yeah. instead use that. Um, and also, their parries count for two in melee combat. Yikes on bikes. So they're just very thick. And yeah. that's all I want to do. I just want to be thick boys. Yeah, that's why I went with orcs before I knew... That's usually my thing. Yeah. Like, what do you want to play? The Juggernaut. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. I could have one big, thick boy 
I would be happy. It's the only character I played in Marvel vs. Capcom. When I was like, thinking about getting into Warhammer, yeah. and uh, um, Cam talked me out of it, I think. But in I, CP? Yeah. Well, I wanted I wanted to play Knights. Oh, okay. Uh, which is just, you effectively put a Gundam, and that's your guy. <laughs> For your, like, the, okay. the fights. Oh, yeah. my, my, my brother. Yeah. My, my yeah. brother in Chonk. Yeah, oh. I, that's, that's what I wanted to do. But um, I thought you were gonna get into Marvel Crisis Protocol and oh, then actually no, no. <laughs> fielding the juggernauts. Yeah, I can't get into any more hobbies. I have to stop. <laughs> I yes understand. Um, but, I but oh, I'm sorry. Oh, go ahead. No, I've seen, uh, off. I did not just receive a package from Japan with more gunpla oh. for myself and Matt. Hmm. <laughs> I feel like for the Wiggins or this Matt Wiggins. Okay. I, I feel like the custodies like talk to the organizers of the kill team, whatever that is, and are like, "What's the minimum number we need to be considered a team for the purposes of this, of this thing?" Yeah. <laughs> yep. I think because one be guy would be happy to go like, in. I feel like twenty of them showed up, and they were like. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. All right. We just um, we need all of you to just kind of we need like four. Yeah, yeah. 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 We have some sort of like shifts. You guys um, can go up. But I'm thinking about picking up uh as I was saying to to Ian, some Sisters of Silence, which are the other units that of these that you can field, which are super cool. You would like the Sisters of Silence. Oh I I just You've seen them? I yeah. yeah, I've seen them and I just learned about them. Yeah. Uh I yeah, they're immune to psychers, yeah. which is very good yeah. against a certain clown per player. <laughs> right, yes, yes, yes. Uh, I did, uh, pick before, again, before I realized I was going to be doing all of this, uh, I did pick up some, um, uh, the uh, Sororitas. Oh, Sororitas, yeah, they're yeah. super cool. Like They're neat. Yeah. Yeah, they're very, very cool. Um, My only thing about them is they're like a little bit too spoopy, scary Christianity for me. Uh, yes, which I which I think is totally fine, and they're super cool. Mm -hmm. But uh, lately, horror games and horror things in general have mm -hmm. been going a little bit steering a little bit too into the well. They're into God, which means you got to watch out for them. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, I'm not a religious person, but. Yep. I don't know. It's it's uh yeah. But they are obviously like into space emperor Jesus. So Yes. For me, one of the appeals of Warhammer is that it's so over the top. Mm -hmm. Like it's it's a parody. Yeah. It, like and it's so over the top that it 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 it's it's kind of like looking and just being like <laughs> look at how dumb this is. Like let's just Get into it. Yeah. Like yeah, yeah. Like like it's it's it it it's so over the top as to make it not necessarily safe. I don't know what the right word is here. Mm -hmm. But it's it's part of the reason why I like World of Darkness and Vampire the Masquerade. Like deep deep lore, and it's so like it knows what it is. Like it's very clear at with what it is. And what it's trying to accomplish it's with it, period. yeah, and it gives it's 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 a world that's trying to give you a safe space to experience some of that mm -hmm. stuff and to examine it and look at it um, in either an over the top way or not. Some people can take it way far in the wrong direction. Yeah, um, but I technically didn't swear there. Uh, <laughs> Got <Catholic> like reassure. <laughs> uh, yeah, I mean, it's it's, it's it, that's part of the reason why when I started learning about the lore, that's kind of what appealed to me. Mm -hmm. um, and started listening to Oculus Imperia and Luton. And thank you for getting me into Luton, by the way. Uh, you're welcome. I'm at nine hours in, I think. I'm not used to people actually like thanking me to getting them into stuff. It's usually curses and and. And how dare you? <laughs> oh, it, it, it was exactly what I needed to, uh, to to fully buy into the entire world. You know, it used to be like, oh, my nice little uh, yeah, Roby boys are, are are fun, and I'll I'll fun with them. <laughs> my like, Roby no. boys. But now you have context. <gasps> mm -hmm. <laughs> the clock. Actually, the clock the chimes at the end of mankind. <laughs> yes. 
Yes, I'm sorry, Paul. You I was going to say, actually, you were, you were talking about the uh, uh, what what orcs sound like. Um, the uh, Oculus Imperius one that has, like, the interview with an orc being like... Oh, yeah. Uh, did, they did, an, you know, whoever they did to do the orc did an amazing job of this orc kind of trying to, like... Explain trying to explain what it is to be an orc, yeah, kind yeah. of in a in a sort of bemused way. Yeah, uh, was highly highly amusing. Yes, that's the uh, 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 one of my favorite episodes of the Wog Effect. Oh, oh, it, it, it was an orc trying to explain cognitive dissonance <laughs> and how orcs don't have cognitive dissonance, but like explaining it in a very orky way. Uh, they're very well done. What? Uh, I, yeah. pre I presume that you've heard the, I mean, I've, 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 from my understanding, it's a very well-told uh, Warhammer orc story about, like, the Imperial Army fighting them that ran out of bullets. Have you not? No. So there was, there's a tale that at least I just kind of heard offhandedly on YouTube where there was an Imperial Army holding off a bunch of orcs, and uh, they were holding off, holding off, and this was going on for a very, very long period of time. And they basically, the Imperial Army ran out of ammo. They had nothing else to do, but there were still all these orcs uh, around them. Um, and uh, they were coming up the field. And they were like, what are we going to do? What are we going to do? And the commander uh, says, boys, just do what I do. And so he puts over his gun, and there's this orc coming full on towards him. And he holds out the gun and says, bang! And the orc <laughs> falls over dead. Because knowing that orcs, basically the power of make believe is yes. what makes them able to do all this yeah. stuff. So all of the all of the imperialists start doing the same thing. They start going bang, ba bang, ba bang, and orcs just start falling over, dead, dying, and dying, and dying, and dying, and dying. Wow. And so then it gets hold up, held off for a moment, and then they're like, oh, "Do you think we did it?" And then they just hear chanting in the background, and then it starts getting louder, and it starts getting louder, and it starts getting louder. And they just see a bunch of orcs all piled together, kind of linking arms, going towards them, screaming, I'm a tank, 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 I'm a tank. And then they bowl them over. <laughs> wow. Is that I don't know canon. if that's true. I have no idea. Okay. But I've heard it told on uh, a couple of different like YouTube channels and stuff. It's a bold, it's a big meme. Because... It's the, it, it's my understanding thus far, again, I'm only three, four months in uh, to my christening, um, that the orcs don't necessarily understand what they're doing all the time. Mm. Oh, I don't know. I would, I, I need to, I'm going to research, I'm going to have to look all this up. Yeah. Absolutely. <laughs> I've seen it just in well, a couple of areas. I mean, the whole thing with, with Warhammer, the brilliant uh, decision they made <clears throat> about canon with Warhammer is that everything is that's in the codexes and stuff is things that are written by people within the Warhammer universe. Yes. Mm -hmm. A universe in which information is very... Difficult to get. Dif difficult mm -hmm. and sparse. So you, you know... Any any information you get might be just what this particular yes. person thinks is true, and and that it again it, I, I I compare it a lot to the world of darkness or not compare it, but it's it's one of the things the world of darkness does is the unreliable narrator. You don't know what's true, mm. so you as a person, as somebody who is into this, you get to do the archaeology mm -hmm. and dig in and try to find the kernels of truth and try to understand. And part of the reason why I like it so much is that it's very difficult for some douche canoe to be like, well, that's not true, it's not this thing. It'd be like, nah, it did, like they literally could, in the next book, they could say X, yep. and that becomes the new true. And at the same time, the other thing is also still true, mm -hmm. depending <laughs> on your perspective, and whatever you want to do with the table, shut up, you chunder. Sorry. I get I get real, real fired up about gatekeeping. I like chunder. I'm trying not to swear. You're I, doing a good job. Thanks. Thank you. Yeah. I don't know what a chunder is. Mm. <laughs> it's I, them, clearly. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. It's 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 one of the things that I like so much about it. Yeah. Um, oh, I have to go. <laughs> sorry, I am out of time. No, Warhammer. Right. <laughs> yeah. <Yep. laughs> All right. Um. 
I look forward to meeting you on the field of battle. Absolutely. Uh, All right, I guess that's kind of the next bit of this, huh? We actually have to fight with them? Yeah, next week? When are we doing this? Uh, two weeks from, yes. Yeah, two weeks, two weeks from, from now. Two weeks from now. Yes. There is, there is your deadline. There's my deadline. Wow. Yeah, there's, there's, there's our deadline. Yeah. Yeah. The, the sixth, I believe, is the first the one. The sixth is yeah. the first one. Okay. All right. Are you ready for this? I think... I like started to sweat a little bit. I think I can get them done. But I, I need to see if I have a leader. I have so much to do. Anyway, thank you so much <laughs> uh, for having me. It was an absolute pleasure to be here. I will see you around. Uh, thank you for dropping by. Seriously, yeah. they look in... Credit. What is this? Uh, I gotta go. I have to go. I have <laughs> get to go. out of here. All right. Bye. We'll bye. teach you about brush cleaning later. Enough. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Please. Thank you. All right. Well, well that actually works too. Yeah. I feel like we're coming up to uh, the end of the stream. I was just about to say we lost Jacob, and uh, that means it's time for us to go too. Yes. Yeah. Why would we not be? Why would we spend any time here without Jacob? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> really, we were just, we were just a two-hour pre-show yeah. until Jacob finished up his stream. <laughs> no. It's been a. Uh... This was great. Yes. I was like, I was worried that I was like, oh man, are me and Ian going to be able to fill? I mean, you fill a whole show pretty much by yourself typically on these, but uh... let me tell you, it's been a weird two years. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. This was uh, this was a lot of fun. It's though. been a lot more fun to have uh, people around while we do this sort of thing. Mm -hmm. and, uh, it, uh, making. Huge progress, both of us too. I think I'm almost. I think I am just about ready to call these guys dunnish. Mm -hmm. Gonna do the base. Gonna do a wash because I know I'm lazy. But. Yeah, this man's needs a lot of work. But if we're going side by side, mm. let's do our finished pieces this of is the our, day. Our final. Oh, well, that guy's got. Yeah, that guy's got a real, uh, real Robotech vibe to him. I uh, love that. <laughs> Yeah, this guy's bases are too thick. <laughs> and there's a, oof, speaking of Robotech, we got uh, the Zentradi of Vayne. Dude, I'm so much taller than yeah. you. <laughs> Man, my guys are huge. Oh, God. We're gonna kick you, think. Oh, you're gonna shoot my ass. <laughs> it's a good thing you got the flat there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, folks, so that's going to do it for Tinker Tailor Solder Fry for this particular interregnum. Uh, thank you so much for watching, whether you're in the chat, just uh, sitting around uh, lurking, whether you're chatting up a storm, or if you're being generous in all the myriad of ways that you have your ability to uh, show your generosity, like patreon.com slash loading ready run. You can keep the lights on, quite literally, and you can uh, provide us with other electrical needs. You can also go over to store dot loading ready run dot com and uh, well unfortunately we don't have a, a paint box yet but maybe that's something Beach can work on <laughs> yeah yeah <laughs> right. may not be a bad idea uh, so check that out there uh, make Beach happy you can also go to youtube dot com slash loading ready live which is where this stream lives all the streamium content lives there youtube dot com slash loading ready runs where all the premium content goes you don't have to pay for it but you can become a member and ask us questions in our monthly Ask Older series. And of course, if you want to check out all the Magic Gathering content that we do, it's helpfully sequestered over at youtube.com slash LRRMTG. Well, what is coming up on the stream schedule for the next little while? Well, uh, coming up in just over an hour, uh, Beige is back with more Metroid Other M. Ooh. Oh. I uh, I think he's he's I don't know if he's doing a full completionist thing, but I think he's being fairly completionist about mm. it. Methodical completion is a very beach thing to do. Yes. Uh, and then on Friday, um, myself, Beige, and Heather will be talking about video games on Checkpoint Chill Point. Uh, and then Friday night paper fight on Friday is going to be Popper. Ooh. With uh, James and uh, Adam and Wheeler and Nelson, uh, got some constructed popper decks. Uh, should be I think very James interesting. James built a bunch of them. Wow, those are yeah, really yeah. Good time. Mm -hmm. uh, and then Friday night, more Metroid Other M. Saturday, it's Loading hey. Ready Live. Uh, something is going to happen. Something is going to happen. I forget. <laughs> It's gonna be a long day. Yeah. Uh, 
Saturday night, more Metroid Other M. Uh, and then on Sunday, Rhythm Cafe, Groove Coaster, Way Way Part. Why Why Part? Yeah, James forgot the Y in Why Why Part. Okay, party. I was wondering the first time this came up. I was like, what is a Why Why Part? <laughs> yeah, no, there, there, there's one more Y there, but not. Oh, really it's a party. Think. Yeah. Okay. Why Why Part? The number of exclamation points is correct. So that I got that question. part correct, but not the name of the game. Well, mm. the thing is, we, we type it into a thing for me. You could copy paste. But... Oh shoot! So whose fault is it really? It's, it's hard work. It's hard work. <laughs> uh, and then the Cantrell Horses Club on Monday, where uh, Corey and friends are going to be doing some art stuff. Mm-hmm. I don't know what they're going to be doing, but it'll be great. Uh, and then we're going to be drinking some glurp. Mm. More glurp. Drink this good. game was just like a one-off suggestion I gave to James for you. What do you like? Ask day of what CTS games we should have, and it just became so it's, great. It's absolutely become a. Uh, I, I would call this a gang beast tier game. Yes, yeah, yeah, very much so. And I believe we're gonna do it like we did uh, last time, which yeah. is get Ooh. as many people as possible into Studio C in here. here studio? Yeah, we're gonna tear all the couches up <laughs> like we did last time and bring them in here. So uh, should be good. Should be good. It's great. It lets us uh, find what we've accidentally misplaced underneath the couches every couple of months. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and so a couple extra dollars usually, too. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Speaking of a couple extra dollars, shall we thank those of you who are uh, subbers and bitters for today? Absolutely. I think we should. I think we should. Well, big thank you to all y'all, starting with Random Trivia for 25 months. Floofy New for the 27 months. Thank you. Don't stick it in your ear. It's the Q sick. <laughs> For 69 months, thank you. Uh, I was thinking I could use a coffee, but I don't need the caffeine right now for 32 months. It doesn't smell so bad because it's a cynic yeti. That means it's always cold. 40 months. Uh, Monster Zinc, it's a robot. It's Mecha Sully. Thanks, guys, nice for the sub by Real Legit Streamer. Princess Intel for five months. Oh, this Baron's popping off for seven months. Spoops Ahoy, my favorite cereal for 48 months. Uh, my favorite comedy, Black Atticus. Kevlar Giraffe stops those bullets, 37 months. This doctor prescribes a boot for 66 months. Rosard, favorite. Favorite Pokemon, 43 months. Uh, Blue Devil is, I think, an anime. It's not a Hades Leprechaun, 22 months. My buddy, months. my buddy Paul got to give this other real legit streamer. Rogue, thank you. Lord Zinch, I'm not playing you, but I enjoy you as a god. Purveil, thank you for your. Do- 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 I'm an evil genius. Complex one, 50 months. Die and wither away. Life is but an X16. That guy. <laughs> and Jacob Burgess is gone, but thank you, dog. Yeah, but he'll always be in our hearts like a pair of Nundrox. Mm-hmm. And we need a map to get through all of these board games around here. Whoo! And thank you, of course, to Corflux and Xanto69 for those bits the bits the bits. The bits. Folks, that's going to do it for one more Tinker Taylor Solder Fry. Thank you so much once again to Matt and to Paul on the text. Thank you, Ben, for yeah, joining me for thanks this. Thanks for having thing. me. And we'll see you uh, in a fortnight's time. Never in Fortnite. Until then, <laughs> thank you for watching. <laughs> Just the random Fortnite blast. Oh, jeez. No, this is this has been part of our sign up for the past two years. Oh, yeah? Yeah. <laughs> Never in Fortnite, ever forward, learning how to spite. Good night, folks. <laughs>